Hey, hey, everyone. We are live. This is the unnamed, unnameable Sunday comic book chat that travels around all our different channels during the month. Um, sadly, uh, Earl Gray could not join us today. Uh, I'm crying inside a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, he'll be back next week. <clears throat> but I have the uh, future farmer, La Rasa, next door to me. <laughs> We were just talking about her dreams of becoming an olive oil farmer. It <laughs> <laughs> that was a secret. <laughs> and then in the lower square, we've got uh, Terrence, the mighty comic crack. We whoop um, whoop. Who's either drinking water or moonshine. We're not sure which. Yeah. <laughs> and it will remain a mystery. <laughs> so Terrence, I heard that you went to New Comic Book Day yesterday. I mean, sorry, not New, uh, Free Comic Book Day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went with, um, so I had meetings and then afterwards me and Lillian went out. Um, she got a lot of books. We went to a couple of different um, shops and all of them have different limitations. One of them, it was limiting to three. One was limiting to two. Mm -hmm. um, so she picked out some stuff for herself, which was fantastic. As soon as we got back in the car, she started reading them. She was really excited about it. Um, and then I just picked up a couple for myself. Um, I got, uh, we live the free comic book day. We live. Um, and I read it yesterday when I got home. Um, and, don't spoil. Uh, it, don't spoil. No, I definitely won't. No, I absolutely won't spoil it, but it, it sucked me back in. Like it's a, it's a prequel, fantastic. right? Before the events of the first five issues of we live. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. And I mean, I, I, I loved, I thought this, this like quartet of kids here were fantastic. Their relationship was really good. Um, just getting a look again at like the landscape and stuff. And I thought it was, I just thought it was a really, really nice story. And it was a nice reminder of kind of what it was that I enjoyed about that first series, even though I wasn't crazy about the way that it ended. Um, mm -hmm. I, I loved this issue. I thought it was really fun. And it just, you know, gives me hope again, like, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe things will, I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm going to, I'm going to be right. uh, buying into the, the next um, volume for sure. To me give too. it a shot. It me me too. A I, I'm thinking with this creative team, it's worth giving it a try, even though that twist at the end oh. seemed dicey in terms of future issues, but we'll see. Right. Dicey. Yeah. That's what did one. you think of this one, Damien? Well, I didn't read it yet. I just glanced. Oh, you it. haven't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the art is, you know, reminds me of how much I loved it. Yeah. I have to say I was not uh, the right. reason I just glanced through it and then I read something else was because I wasn't super excited to go back in time. Mm -hmm. But now that you're yeah. saying it was really good, I, I, I will definitely read it. Mm -hmm. And for a new comic book day, it's really chunky. It's a full size issue, basically, or close to it. Yep. That's cool. You know, a lot of new comic book day comics are either reprints or just a few pages that are a teaser. Right. It's it's already uh, been said everywhere on the website I checked because I was trying to look for what kind of comic book is going to come out on this free comic book day. And mm -hmm. um, everyone is saying, oh, this is the hot one. This is the hot one. You better pick it up. Oh, or right. I see now you're going to miss it. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's the one. That was that was my ma my first reason for going to New Comic Book Day is I didn't want to we live. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't even mm. know that it was coming out. Like I had heard, you know, this Stray Dogs was a hot one. And then this, mm -hmm. what is it? Something is killing the children, but it's some other title. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Enter the House problem. of Slaughter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, even halfway through the day, that was selling online for like twenty bucks an issue. I was talking oh, to wow. one of my comic That's book crazy. guys. I was talking to one of my comic book guys, and there's a, a comic shop in Canada. I don't remember the name of it, but the night before Free Comic Book Day, they were they were holding auctions of free comic books online before even the day started. So they were selling things already, like. And just mm -hmm. talking to a couple of the store owners about that, I mean, going in with my daughter and seeing how excited she is, thankfully, we didn't have to fight through any kind of groups of speculators and, and that kind of nonsense. But that must be really frustrating as like a shop to, you know, because then you have to limit things because someone's going to come in and just take a bunch of the comics that they're going to turn around and sell where it really right. defeats the purpose. I don't know how much that was happening all over the place. I'm just speaking from mm -hmm. very, very limited yeah. uh, experience and stories that I've heard. But yeah, it seems yeah. like this kind of stuff is just getting worse and worse in the comic book market in the past yeah. few years. Right. Hopefully, it will fade away again. I mean, this they're they're supposed to be free comics, so everyone can enjoy them. 
And they exactly. aren't really free. Yeah. No, they aren't really free. They're not free to the shop owners either. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have to pay for No, it. my guy was telling me he was paying 20 cents an issue is what he had to yeah. pay um, for the stuff that, uh, that right. he got. So 20 cents Canadian an issue. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, um, did you pick up any other free ones? Uh, I found this one. I went to I went to um, <laughs> to a four comics because I didn't see this at any of the other shops, and I wanted to make sure I got my hands on it. So I got that one. I haven't read it yet. And then the only other one that I got is I, I tried out a this one from Silver Sprocket, um, Tales of a Grown Up Nothing. Um, nice. it reminded me of a Judy Bloom title that. from when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. But this this looks great. The art is really nice in it. I'm familiar with Silver Sprocket, although off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what it is that I've read from Silver Sprocket. But I, I love the interiors. I love the coloring, you know, like the limited color palette and stuff looks really nice. Oh, so cool. I figured, you know, again, the, the beauty of free comic book day, see something interesting, give it a shot. Why not? It ain't cost you anything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah Those were the only three well, that I let me let, let me put you a center screen again and you can oh, yeah, show sure. it to us some more. Sorry. I no, that's okay. Falling down on the gut ball. Um, so yeah, Silver Sprocket, Tales of a Grown Up Nothing, by uh, Elizabeth Pick, I think that says, P I C H, and then, um, you know, a little bit of uh, Carmen going on there, naked lady flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> Is but, that the, um, it looks, the theme now? It looks great. Like that color palette, I think, is really really nice. I like the limited, um, mm -hmm. and just the character design and everything looks like a lot of fun almost has a little bit of um i don't know has it has kind of minor uh adventure time ish type of vibe to some of the art you know with like simplicity mm -hmm. but still looking really really fantastic so yeah that looks neat oh i'm feeling i'm feeling fomo now it was yeah, probably yeah. there and i didn't pick it up <laughs> oh. there were so shop. many i don't know what it was like at your shops especially this last this one i went to today he had a ton of books. Um, there was a lot of options. I, I don't keep up with what comes out every year. I just kind of show up and see what's there. But I was surprised at the the amount mm -hmm. of uh, choices this year. It seems like there was more than in previous years, but maybe that's just me because I haven't participated in it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I went to my shop early. He opened early at <laughs> 9. <laughs> Wait, did I miss something? No, he... no, no. I'm still soloed. You can you can take me off. Oh, you're still you soloed. Yeah, so I am. Yes, it's me feeling a little. <laughs> it's confusing when you're the person in charge because I can see everybody the whole time, and I yeah. forget that no one right, else. Right, right. <laughs> um, um, and I'm just not on the ball today. Uh, <laughs> my shop opened an hour early because we're having a heat wave. Oh, and also we just the law just said again that you have to mask up inside shops and limit numbers of people in, in the shop so he he opened up early he put up like awnings and uh put out all these boxes of books that are in his back storage that i don't normally have access to and mm -hmm. everything in those was two dollars but with my uh, discount it all ended up being a dollar 40 a comic so mm -hmm. I ended up getting 60, 60 back issues <laughs> yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then as only as a uh, as a afterthought, I went and looked at the free comics. And it was kind of crowded around there. And I felt bad, like it, the store is cramped. I felt bad getting in people's way. So I didn't see things that I didn't already know I wanted. So I already knew I wanted We Live. And then I had heard on someone else's... Uh, video where they interviewed a shop owner who said this judge dread was really interesting they've mm. got um al ewing and casper weingard doing a judge dread story and um john higgins the uh who was the colorist from watchmen is doing art on one of mm. these so anyway i thought so i knew that i wanted to grab that and i knew about the house of slaughter because i ran into tom he's a guy um can't remember the full name of his channel now because he keeps changing. He's a guy who lives here in Portland who just started a YouTube channel and mm -hmm. he had picked this up and that's what made me realize that, that was there. Mm -hmm. But um, the main thing was getting to have access to all these books that my shop owner doesn't normally put out. And I really wish he would rotate his uh, stock more. I see. So there's the pile. Oh my God. And it included quite a bit of Phantom Stranger. 
Wow. Um, Bronze Age uh, Fantastic Four. Jeez. Let's see. I double dipped on a bunch of commandies, which I'll probably give as gifts to somebody. Nice. Um, plop. Mm, this is nice. Plop that doesn't have a Basil Wolverton cover, but still yeah. I grabbed right. it. it was less yeah, that's the later ones, dollars. yeah. Mm -hmm. Charlton Phantom. Nice. Oh, cool. um, let's see. Mystery in Space. Kazar. Mm -hmm. I can't show you everything, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Losers. Mm. Nice. Good work. From our fighting forces. So anyway, I had a lot of fun. I would have liked to stay longer, but um, I would have bought even more. Wow. But I had wow. family family waiting on me, so I came back home. Did, so anyway, it was uh, a lot of fun. Have sales on? I don't know. I just went to that one okay. shop. Okay. And I also, because it's my regular shop, and I knew he was worried because the mask policy had just come back, that mm -hmm. his business would be bad. I wanted to go out and support him on that day. But cool. also, he told me about the boxes of all the stuff from storage. So I was curious about mm -hmm. that. Um, yes, Damien is Sweet. stacked. <laughs> I would yeah, have bought, yeah. if I had another half hour, I would have bought a, a second stack that large. Right. Jesus. Um, I, Part of me is like, oh, those other people are going to get those books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So anyway, that's how it goes. I, I did very well yeah. for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. I, I really like it. I mean, I remember going with uh, Jaden when he was a kid for free comic book day stuff. And he always mm -hmm. got a real kick out of it. And I accident. So when I went today to pick up uh, uh, my, my pull list from 204 and pick a couple of free comic book days. I grabbed one for Lillian as well too. Turns out she already had it. So she's going to pass it on to a friend of hers, but it's oh, just nice. that whole, you know, that whole thing is just such a, a great thing. Like, and again, it's, you know, as you are well aware, Damien, and you'll become aware soon enough, I'm sure Rasa, like just seeing your kid enjoying something, especially if it's enjoying reading is just, mm -hmm. it's so much fun. Like I said, as soon as we were back in the car, she buckled herself up, pulled the book out and started reading it as we went on to the next place. So nice. it's, uh, it's nice. really, really great. That's good. Maybe you're going to have a reader in your family again. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and then my daughter now being 13 doesn't like to be dragged to things that her dad's doing, but, but she still <laughs> yeah, likes yeah. comics. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like admitting it as much lately, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Yeah, new comic book day. We don't have it in UK because of the delay of shipment. So it's going to be next week. Uh, My comic book guy uh, says, okay. you just tell me what you want because I do receive it in post. I read, I used to come and visit him, you know, especially for that kind of day because I know I can support him money wise as well and business wise. So, but this time, of course, I'm not doing it. I have, I went to visit him and he was trying to, I think, prepare for that kind of thing. But his store was so cramped with stock of six months when he wasn't opened because of the lockdowns and stuff. So he wasn't able, I don't know, hopefully he's able to sell some kind of stock and stuff. But then there's one on, on Twitter I'm following. There's this new shop in Leeds. I think Dr. Monk, Gibberworth, and all those uh, guys are visiting. And they had sale for 10 pence a comic book. And I was like, oh my fucking Lord. Yeah, I saw I would, that photo on Twitter. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I would have, I, I stri straight away, I was like, oh, I wish I could go just to the comic book shop, and like, just, but Leeds is like, um, okay, American distance, maybe Canadian distance, so it's like, oh, it's nothing, you just can go drive, like, two, three hours drive, I think, um, it's quite a long distance for my, for me, <laughs> or uh, anyway, drive my husband to do that kind of thing, and also, you know, we have still uh, COVID running around and you everywhere, and yeah. you guys know that as well. So I think being more cautious and having feeling happy with buying comic books is something I have to consider. It. So anyway, but it's just like, oh my god, I've never, I haven't seen ten P comic books for a while. So it's, I would have gone absolutely bonkers, and probably my head was frazzled. I would just get everything, and I was like, oh, why the hell did they pick this shit up? <laughs> <laughs> just because of the price, you know? You just go like. <gasps> And everybody's like rushing. Even the guy was one of the guy was tweeting. Uh, I think I seen. I think I'm gonna consider just to go there just because of the price. <laughs> so good for people. I guess it's just like um, I think they're trying to get them as much people and business coming in, and they buying some other people's collection and, and stuff like that. So it's good to see that actually there are some people who cares. And I think it's always been that comic book shop and leaves number one for people like if they want to get deals, they really good services. I heard. Never had a chance to visit, but when everything maybe gonna 
hopefully someday die down from all this commotions we have in the world. I definitely will be, it's on my list to go and visit because I wouldn't mind traveling around, you know, like the country still, there's so many beautiful places to visit. I haven't yeah. yet done as well, which is something I probably should. Anyway, so yeah, so, so it's well, a pity. It's, so It's great that your shop will send you yours though. I mean, yeah. because, yeah. you know, that's, as we said, well, yeah, he has to pay something for it. So that's really nice of him. Well, the thing is, we it's a, a good relationship. I mean, I always try to be, you know, I, I slash my pool, but I always try to pass something else. Like, I always keep keep up the relationship with him. And also, he's more than welcome. He's like, he's, when I went to visit him, he actually mentioned it. I forgot completely that it would be something like that, actually. Because, you know, like, usually comic book days are in May and stuff like that. So, right. And then he said to me, oh, have a look somewhere, see what you see, if you like it, and just let me know. But yeah, it's it's crazy how um, you, you just having one shop, and if you get get along with the person, how good a relationship you can get, and you know whatever you usually need, usually tries to wish you, wish it for you, you know, because at the end of the day, he gets sales, and I am becoming a happy customer. So it's a two way relationship at the end of the day. So yeah, I'm wondering so, uh, where Andrew Andrew Lopez is feeling the FOMO if he has no shops near him or is not in the U.S. or Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, yeah, the FOMO of online FOMO of seeing what other people got. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I got tons and I still was jealous of Darren's yeah. getting that one book I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so before we get to comics, Rasa said there was some uh, show you wanted to mention. Oh, so Disney is, is producing the What If. Oh, What If, uh, yeah, I forgot about and that. And the first episode that. was with Captain America, and who is Sharon Carter, was the Captain America. Um, the animation, I'm not sure, it's a 50-50 for me. I enjoyed in some sequences, some sequences I didn't. Uh, the action seems fantastic. I heard, I read some things on Twitter, people complaining about her shoulder length, because she is supposed to be in, you know, like, you know, too big for female, which is... You know, like that's the whole point of that series is to have that serum in your body, which is enhance right. your body triple the size to to get your power going on. So right. that was interesting to actually even read. Um, but in general, a very action sequence. Uh, one episode went past, breezed through, honestly. And I really like her. I like her. She's the same actress voice as well. So from original actual. Uh, series agent carter if you have guys haven't watched it and and she's fantastic as an actress i, I really enjoy her um atkins i forgot her name anyway doesn't matter uh <laughs> the only thing I, I i would question her love life because she's going without with tom cruise the ageless dude who is <laughs> a visit of of age you know like looks like steamy clean now uh, like almost in the same time age like squished in the same time era which is actually kind of weird anyway yeah so very good uh show so far i mean very i mean you've seen everything you know where exactly what's going to happen if you are following marvel and generally um i will be more interested to see maybe are they good they will be doing doctor strange one which i'm interested in and also captain america as a zombie apparently um which i don't know what that what if story at all because it's animated right Yes, it is animated. And did you like and the anime, the style of the animation? As I say, it's, it was 50 50 for me because there's the shadows quite heavy. But honestly, if that kind of animation my kid would watch, I definitely would enjoy, like, let him watch kind of that stuff. I miss, you know, they actually uh, off story now because we're talking about animation. Um, Disney just released a goofy couple of shorts and absolutely fantastic drawn feels like old school oh. goofy series. There's three episodes of them about like wearing your mask, which is actually quite funny. And Goofy's trying to put a mask. That's absolutely hilarious. And showed that to my my kid, three and a half year old. He could not stop laughing, which is that's exactly what kind of Disney I want him to watch. The old school stuff. Right. Anyway, so that kind of animation is not the same. What they Sharon Carter was that was more computerized, you know, those stylish kind of cartoons that they call them now. Uh, but yeah, definitely entertaining. I think it uh, would be great for people who get to know the characters, even though we know who they are. And um, for uh, for the for a fan, I think it's just to I don't know. You just enjoy it sometimes. You know, it's just like about like half an hour, I think, is an episode. So really goes quickly if it's action scene. So just wanted to mention this. Yeah, we haven't. I didn't watch it. We'll watch it next weekend when my son is here. He wasn't here this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw the the posts online too about. 
her shoulders. And thankfully, uh, I don't follow too many people that talk about that in any great deal because <laughs> it's just unfortunate that people talk about that kind of nonsense. But mm. yeah, I'm curious to see it. the animation in the trailer. The animation didn't blow me away, yeah. but definitely give the show a shot for sure. Yeah, it's, it's as I say, it's really well. Like the action scenes are superb. There's one action scene which I absolutely loved it. Um, of course, she's beating the Nazis' asses, like all Hydra asses. And right. the way the uh, fluid animation was, it's really, I didn't, like, you know, sometimes you want to, because you know the story, you kind of want to see if they, like, made a mistake sometimes, you know, like, just, you know, like, seeing the storyline and how the shots progress, and that was, looked, looked really flawless, to be honest. So, in that sense, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I like character anyway. So, seeing her as a Captain America, it feels like right, and she even has the British uh, shield with British uh, flag. That was great to see, you know, because it kind of reminded me of Gra Captain Britain, although he didn't have a shield. I don't think, isn't it? I don't remember that. I think he had so. a staff instead of yeah, some some something like that. Anyway, so yeah, that's the only thing I can remember. I it got into my head while I was managed to do. Watch. I'm not sure what cell shades means. I know it must have to do with animation cells, yeah. but I don't know what the shades part. Something in the style of art, maybe? Yeah, yeah I'm not too sure either. Mm. Yeah, it just feels like a little bit heavy-handed when it goes shadows, for example, for me. Mm -hmm. A bit too dark for areas, and mm -hmm. sometimes felt like the lightning. I know the scene was in, in nighttime, but the lightning in some apart areas wasn't like up to grasps. So some somewhere, but it just feel a little bit odd. But I think, you know, not everybody want to like everything, you know, like how people do it, does it. But it's better what I've seen before, like not talking about Marvel animation, but these days animation sometimes is really ah, lacking, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, I did get to see the first episode of Primordial on the airplane. Oh, is, who's Primordial? Or is oh, it you mean Primordial? primordial the Primal, sorry, Primal. primal. <laughs> oh, so, the yeah, the awesome. caveman cartoon that you were oh, raving so, about many, sweet, many months sweet. ago. Oh, yeah, how was what it? Did you think? Um, I loved it. I mean, at first, I it took me a little while to get into it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all silent. Yeah. Uh, but when when the whole relationship with the dinosaurs started happening, uh -huh. that really got to me. I don't know why. It's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's almost yeah. like Conan meets Devil Dinosaur or something. Yeah. I mean, I I um, had so now I guess I'm gonna have to pay to get the rest of it. <laughs> oh shit! It's but it's well fine. worth it, Damien. Honestly, yeah. it just gets better as that relationship develops. It just gets better. Um, it's mm -hmm. yeah, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to see the second season. So yeah, I was mm. really surprised to see it as one of my options on the back of the seat video on the airplane. That's and cool. it was wow, perfect because really, it's always yeah. hard to hear dialogue on the airplane. So uh, yeah, right. all because I had to do is listen movie. to the sound effects and music, which is fine. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I should have I should have followed up on your recommendation a long time ago. But <laughs> ah, anyway, it happens. I was, yeah, I was putting it off because usually I watch stuff that my my daughter likes, and then I read comics right. when she goes to bed. Mm. Um, uh, the primal is actually that first episode really actually so like I was crying. I did not like the way <laughs> they were doing. I mean. I did enjoy the story overall, but I was like, bloody hell, why do you, why? It's animation. I mean, what the hell? And just right heart strings being pulled, you know, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Why would you do that to the, you know, like kind of thing straight away get in the motion. And you don't have to, and the, the dialogue you say, so you don't really, you know, like not really much of attachment there, just you're watching actions going through, but you know, he definitely picked the right moments of way to pull those heart strings for me, especially so. Yeah. Yeah, it and it might be as the longer I watched, the more I got into not having dialogue and just yeah. following. Right, it. It kind of blew my well, mind I when I realized, oh, this is a suicidal caveman. I never. Thought <laughs> <of that>. Yeah, <laughs> when uh, I think when we talked about it originally, one of the things that you know that's just so impressive about it is the ability to kind of get those ideas across in animation. You always think of, or at least I do anyway, like an actor projecting those emotions and stuff. Like so, to have a, a drawn character and still get mm. these things across like it's it's a real mark of somebody who has a pretty damn good handle on storytelling right like it's yeah. uh, it's, it's yeah. an impressive feat yeah uh, very good and that animation i would watch every time because that's spot on that was like really good the scene the the, the and soundtrack as well because don't get me wrong if that sound soundtrack wasn't uh, up to grasp i think that animation would really 
suffer, but thankfully that didn't happen at all. So. <laughs> I can't stop thinking of it as primordial. I keep going with that in my head. Oh, well. <laughs> Okay, well, um, let's go on to comics. Uh, usually we force Rasa to go first. So, Terrence, are you up for going first? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Just smile, um, Terrence. Just smile. Or did were you was Terrence forced to go first last time? Actually, no, no, it's no, that's fine. I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> um, so we'll we'll start with uh, we'll start with the big gun. Um, so I did a trade with. Um, Greg Harder in town. I had some stuff for him last time. He had uh, this for me. Um, so I had some more. I'm going to pull it out of the bag here. Um, I had some more books to trade. Uh, so I got my hands on heavy metal issue number one. Wow. Um, from, what is it? April, <laughs> April 1977. Um, it's a Land, beautiful. Landmark issue. A landmark issue was right. Like it's, it's in beautiful shape. Um, you should see, you see it now. Well, honestly, <laughs> when I started looking online, which maybe I shouldn't have done, and seen the prices that some of these higher grade ones go for, oh, shit. it really got me. It really got me thinking that. <laughs> um, so uh, yesterday, and I started reading it, and I mean, they do, you know, they do the origins <laughs> of how it came to be. Like, so National Lampoon mm -hmm. had um, taken this on, and the artists. So just kind of sitting and reading this very first issue thinking that like this was the introduction to den for uh north america uh, um this was the introduction of mobius to north america this was the introduction of drie to north america like just sitting and thinking of everything that came out of this magazine that absolutely influences and then also seeing stuff like this from artists and creators that didn't have as much of an impact so stuff that I don't know about previously and it's still being really really enjoyable stuff just thinking of what this was like when it came out in 1977 you know it's not that there was absolutely nothing like this beforehand you know if you were into undergrounds or the star reaches of the world and, and that sort of thing the uh, kind of uh, ground level comics that were still that were out but this was a, a completely different language when you're dealing with European artists um, and it's so much fun and like I said uh, just kind of sitting and leafing through even reading the stories that I don't um, yeah easy listening number one uh, that's uh, I thought that was from Scott was from, uh, Dreams albums yes. those would be the easy listening ones and then of course Mobius and I cannot imagine what it would have been like to you know turn a page after all this black and white stuff and also, also the uh the corbin was in color but then to see mobius who kind of had his own thing going on and is his own style very distinct from everything else that you've read up until this point um the black and white stuff as great as it is there's a lot of kind of similarity in the way it looks to each other um and then coming across this arzak story um mm -hmm. with, you know kind of a, a gag ending and it goes back to see this princess that he got a glimpse of and she turns around and, and he's met with that face <laughs> and then just hightails it out of there. You know what I mean? So um, very, very nice. And this so oh, I, you, that picture of her face just caused me to have a flashback. I had that issue. Oh, OK. I yeah. wasn't sure what, when I started with heavy metal. I was 15. Oh. Blew, my, blew my mind like you're just saying. I can't imagine what it was like. <laughs> I was right. Like, I, the most radical thing I'd read before then was maybe one issue of eerie or creepy. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that definitely would have been out Ooh. there too, but um, yeah, this is, this is beautiful stuff. Um, what else was, oh, here we go. This was a great image too. This giant uh, robotic computer here that uh, becomes sentient and attacks these characters in this story. Um, just so much fun to flip through. Um, I now have the first four years complete of heavy metal. That's amazing. Um, which is great. Um, and they're all down here in front of me in this uh, piece of furniture that I got recently. Because <laughs> I, I plan to just sit and start reading, you know, like from this one and just kind of just keep going. Um, just to really get into the continuing story. Because I don't think I've ever really done that or I haven't done it too often. You just kind of pick up an issue here and there and give it a read. 
but uh, I'd like to follow some of these stories through and just see how the magazine develops. Um, yeah, that would be cool to do now that you have them all very interesting to right. look back and see how it developed. Like, I and wonder then, when they started bringing in uh, American artists. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, Bode, right, so they did from the beginning. Right, right from the beginning. So Von Bode is here. And then, of course, Corbin is in here as well, too. Yeah. Um, but the Corbin was brought from that was in the original Metal Herland. Metal Herland, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And then uh, a beautiful Drie back cover, color cover. Jeez. Oh, so, yeah. It's really, really nice. I, it's just one of those things, again, like I just never thought that I'd get a copy. And then I, I caught wind from a mutual friend of ours, this Daniel Hall that I bought from before, that Greg mm -hmm. had a copy of number one come in. Um, so I contact him and said, you know, I don't know if anybody else has claimed it, but I would love to, you know, I'd love to claim it once you finish processing the collection that he's bought. Um, so it's fantastic. And again, like getting rid of some stuff that, you know, at its face is maybe worth a couple hundred dollars if I can sell it for that, just to have one thing that, you know, is guaranteed to to kind of sell eventually, right? So, right. Um, yeah. And that's- but you don't want to right slab it anytime thing. soon. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of it anytime soon or slab it or anything, you know, like it's beautiful to have this stuff. I'm very excited. So that was my, my big score of the week. Mm. Yep. Yeah, people were talking about, or some people were talking about, uh, oh, sorry, I did it again. That's okay. That's that right. Your face. I don't really want to see anything else. <laughs> You're the handsomest man in YouTube, so we got to keep you up there. Thank you. Oh, um, sorry. Do I, do you, do you want me to leave? Maybe you should get married or something. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Come on. <laughs> Are you jealous? Do you wish you were the handsomest man on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I'm still having female parts. I mean, I haven't this discuss that in my own head do i want to change to uh male counterparts but yeah okay right. you'll just have to get a boner 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 those parts are highly overrated <laughs> I, don't, I don't know man i, I highly doubt that yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, that's I was just wondering the other day if if you're a uh, transgender a woman transferring to male, mm -hmm. do you get to choose the size of your organ? Because <laughs> all of us born males do not get to choose. Uh, be, oh my I have no idea draws. how that works. <laughs> yeah, he drops draws. You just get whatever size draw you pull. No, it's whatever the it, doctor's it, mood is that day. Yeah, right. No, it's the, right. it, it, it depends how good your medical insurance in America or in right. UK is. Uh, if easy wake, it doesn't know exactly what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Do I feel like I am gonna give you a big one <laughs> or not? Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Oh, that's this interesting. Is what Scott's saying here. And William Stout was kind of, for a while, a name artist, but it's kind of disappeared from memory now. Mm -hmm. Right. So then what you're saying, Scott, is that um, Von Baudet stuff might have been, was in the Metal Here Lant as well, too. Hey, I would or love it to was get at least a time. reprint from Undergrounds. Right. So a reprint from some other source, whether it was, uh, it might've been in Metal Harland, I don't know. I understand, I get you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So something specific for the magazine, not coming from somewhere right. else. Like yeah. that they commissioned uh, directly. Right. <laughs> yeah, a, a history book on heavy metal would actually be a nice coffee table book, I think. That would be fantastic, yeah. Mm. If it would cover the, the French side, it would be nice for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to get both. some of the French yeah. ones. Do either of you have any of the French ones? I have one issue. I think it's like number twelve or eight or something. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's on different paper. It has a different feel somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I should dig it up and look at it again. Compare, try yeah, to yeah. find issues to compare it with. Do you have any, Terrence? No, nothing. No, I've never yeah. seen them around it. This makes me want to find some though and just check them out just to see how it was presented in there. And, you know, because I'm sure if if we're getting artists in this heavy metal that they didn't have, I'm sure there's a vice versa as well, too, where they're publishing stuff that didn't make it over here. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I think they're very rare in the wild. It was just the one time right. I found one. Right. And the price was okay. It wasn't too bad. So I picked it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
actually better than the fourteen dollar price for a new one right now. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and the new ones just haven't hit me as much. They just are you know, missing like, something. It's hard to. They're missing it. something. I agree. Who's the editor? Because they keep on changing them, isn't it? Yeah, that changes all the time. I think Tim Seeley is now the sort of name editor, but then there's two other people who are also editors. So I don't know oh, who really makes those decisions. Yeah. And Tim Seeley is someone I respect in comics, but I wouldn't have thought of him as like the guy to do heavy metal. Yeah. Right. He has lots of, he, he puts fingers in every, like a lot of uh, comic books where he wants to draw, like write and stuff like that. And even like he does cover drawings and stuff like that. But he's almost like a Colin Bunn, you know? Tim Seeley is quite everywhere at the moment. Like yeah. even, yeah. he dabbles, goes to DC, goes but after he speaks his own book, then he goes that. Then he's still, you, um, money shot. I thought, you know, like it finished, but they have volume two, but they changed the artist and I, and that's, it's a breaker for me because the artist was fantastic on the first one and I can't you just like you know you have a really great artist on the on the money shot and I don't know I just I, I looked at uh, the new one and it just had didn't have the same feeling of yeah. the, the series so anyway oh talking about the prices damn that shit there eh? can't believe <laughs> that bloody thing right so oh. every issue is gonna be five dollars yes I mean, come on, what the hell is going on? Anyway, I'm not getting it. This is the the last time I'm going to be getting this. Um, so if you guys have been talking about saying, go get the bunny mask, no, don't wait. If, if you don't want Make to pay five. Yeah, just, it's really, I mean, it's a good comic book, I'm telling you, but uh, having that kind of high prices, it's actually really, like I said before on Twitter, it just has a very bad, bit, bit of taste to me of, of, of this thing. Anyway. So just wanted to let you know because I've been talking about in this chat about this one. So mm -hmm. no more in single issues. <laughs> no more. You have you lost one one reader for sure. So Dang. yeah. And I think that's all of I might be all of Aftershock's books going forward. Are Is that five bucks? Whoosh. No, nothing. So I'm I'm if I get they live, I'm assuming it'll be five bucks too. Oh, well, good luck with that, guys. I'm not picking that up as well. Yeah, I'm not Sorry, sure, not... but but we'll see. So yeah, I just I don't I don't see the point, honestly, the of paying that much money for a single issue. I I know you want to do that number one. I get it. Spawn still have two ninety nine, like Chaos is saying, which is absolutely fantastic, and I think all of them should have the same. I know cardstock, extra thicker paper. No, give me a newsprint. If I if that means that I have the same comic book on a newsprint, I uh, read it. Definitely buy it. You would have my my money for it. But honestly, add up. You know, like how many comic books you can pull for five bucks and in your pull list. I mean, yeah, if you don't want don't want part of your waste with your com like money towards that kind of thing, you can do so. But no, not for me. Yeah. I will struggle to pick up the number one issue for that price tag. That's where Marvel has gone from my my. Uh, pull is because of that kind of pricing now aftershock definitely is gonna go I, i'm definitely not going there if they're gonna continue that way so so i mean that's that's kind of a part you know maybe just to dig into this just a tiny bit i can understand mm -hmm. it from a company like aftershock doing a 4.99 because i'm sure that the amount that they're printing is uh, you know and yeah. I, maybe before i say this i don't know the numbers that everybody's printing it seems inexcusable from like a marvel dc standpoint because i imagine they're printing a lot more and their costs are way down but it doesn't surprise me too much with a company like Aftershock, but I think you also said mm -hmm. it too that, you know, you're making some options there as far as what kind of paper stock you're using. And I know that's yeah. probably part of a market thing because you end up hearing from people too that the cover quality from Marvel or DC or whoever, whatever company is the topic at the moment is just the shits, right? So I think they're trying to be competitive, but yep. the price tag of 49 for a company like Aftershock doesn't shock me too much, doesn't surprise me too much it more surprises me with like the Marvels and DC stuff because they must have some sort of deal with the printers that they're always going to for X amount of titles, X amount of copies, you know what I mean? Right. Mm. Well, Aftershock, the pro one of the problems with me is like, unlike Image Comics usually are 24 pages, Aftershock stories are still 20 pages. Yeah. Um, and the trade is going to be so much cheaper. Um, yeah. And so it's just kind of, 
I can understand that their margins are low, but on the other hand, it's sort of like let's milk the single issue buyers to keep the prices down for the trade buyers. Yeah. And that as a single issue buyer kind of frustrates me. Yeah. Um, I don't, I think I will get, they live, but I don't think I'll try out any other aftershock comics um, coming up. I've already cut way back on aftershock because of that $5 first issue. So if every issue is going to be five. Mm. There may be paper shortages. I mean, I've heard about wood shortages, so I don't know if that's affecting paper too. Yeah, um, well, if that would happen, then yeah. But it's, as I say, it's like um, there's lots of choices, and right. you guys up to you how, what, and what you want to spend, and how companies want to deal with the their own company, like you know, produ productions, what they do. So it's like, as I say, yeah. for me, no, thank you. I'll, I'll I have. You know what? It, what it, one driving force for me is now I can buy almost the like you know back issues. If that price tag for back issue of like seventies or you know like that era, I definitely would pay the price because I know what I'm gonna get because it's already been there, done that kind of thing, and I would like that because it's kind of like I don't know. But brand new stuff is just it's just the way my 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 brain processes. It's like nope. Sometimes I can even buy 70s comic books so for cheaper for the new one. And right. new ones get trades. You know, trades are everywhere. Or I know I don't like trades. I like hardcovers and stuff like that. And they don't get hardcovers. So it's just the way I feel like. I just, I wasn't expecting. I honestly wouldn't have picked it up because I didn't really look. Because the cover, the, you see, the, the price tag is at the back of the, you know, like comic book. So I never looked, honestly, because I ordered it through online and I get delivered my comic books. I don't really check m much of it because I know I do get even discount from a comic book guy. But still, I think he, even he would say, which is crazy price. But, you know, he orders for people who wants to buy it. And that's what I mentioned before. So, yeah. And those four ninety nine books will be in the month time, two months time. If they, number twos, number threes, number fours, they won't cost you five dollars. They Very will true. cost you Very two. True. Maybe yeah. even less than that. Honestly, you would yeah. be struggling yeah. to sell. Depending on your shop, you might be able to get yeah. them for a dollar after a while. Yeah, issue number one, I can understand because there's this market now going crazy for issue number ones, especially if it's popular between the people who's buying it and collecting stuff like that. But issue two, number three, and number four, definitely not. It's not something yeah. you're you're gonna expect to pay up more. Never, if even the comic books, like it's rare if it's first appearance or something, or if they're getting the movie um appearance or something or deal or movie then i can understand maybe the comic books will go price here but other than that no that's not gonna happen so yeah yeah, yeah. makes well, a good point previous layer if marvel and dc yeah, moved to 291 today that. it'd be a huge and independent comics would be in serious trouble that's yeah. absolutely right like they would that's be true. So it would tempt me back marvel to marvel and dc yeah yep mm. and jared osborne i think has pointed out that historically you used to pay extra to get indie comics, you know, like a mm -hmm. dollar more or something. And now it's the other way around. Often the Marvel and DC are more expensive than the indie comics. Yeah. It's all very short sighted because the, the dedicated buyers at the comic book shops kind of help your whole business grow in the long run, but with the word of mouth and all the other things and the, the money they feed in early on, whereas a, a trade paperback is going to sell slower and take more time to make its money back. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's very short-sighted to abuse the single issue market. But I've been saying that a long time, and we're all still here. <laughs> Was there any I mean, I wonder, uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I wonder with all this other stuff that we, that, you know, I wonder if this also ties into the whole, like, the whole speculator thing, right? Like, if some of these books are going to skyrocket, then you know these smaller companies may be wanting to just chip in a little bit more. It's like, okay, well now it's four ninety nine. Let's try to make another dollar. I don't know. I might be talking out of my ass, but it maybe that plays into the whole overall kind of game plan for them as well. Because I mean that kind of stuff must be really frustrating for these companies when one of their books skyrockets and you see everybody else making a boatload of money off it that you now didn't make. You know, unless yeah. you held back copies or whatever. You know what I mean? I can definitely see my shop owner fuming sometimes. Like, I didn't know this issue was going to be hot. I only ordered two copies, and now they're all gone. Yeah. <laughs> so I can imagine it gets inside the heads of all the professionals, seeing people just making money off of their work. Mm -hmm. um, I do think Comic Crack has, I mean, sorry, Chaos and Comics has a good point. 
it might be for some people they'll have more money to buy for indies because they always buy the Marvel and DC no matter what. Um, so it might depend on the on the consumer. <laughs> predatory pricing. It is kind of predatory pricing at times. It's already now. I think it's a way we were dictating the pricing anyway in the first place. Before we had three ninety nine, and then Marvel went into four ninety nine for first issue, and then everybody followed suit because at the end of the day, trying to get every single in the audience, uh, you know, for your own buck and, and don't want to mess out the money back. So yeah, it's always that kind of thing going to happen and always will happen no matter whatever it is. And if it's shortest, like people were talking about, talking about back and boards, people just put your comic, two comic books in one bag and board and you'll save shit loads. I'm telling you, I've been doing that now. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, my child does not let me to do reorganize my comic book. So it takes me forever. But I've been doing that for maybe now what five years. Not complaining about the comic book uh, condition at all. <laughs> I've taken out, looks nice and clean, and it doesn't have the roll, which is fun enough. My money comic books usually have the roll, so if you want to save one bag, some books, do that double, double comic just books in one bag. We, just before we went live, I was doing that. I'm still working through the cabinets, compiling yeah. some mini series together and stuff. And you're absolutely right. Like that spine roll is the biggest thing that it solves if you do back to you know if you just yeah. reverse them you flip them as you're putting them in and i mean some yeah. of these mini series depending on the size i'm fitting six issues in one bag goes right wow. back yeah. in i'm saving so much space it's ridiculous um and, yeah, and, and i mean it looks like it's it's solid like these are solid packs right so it's great yeah especially modern book comic books i'm talking about a lot of modern modern stuff if you care like 70s like marvel stuff or dc stuff in that era i don't think you should do that i think those comic books has the different paper and they do activate an asset kind of like of fields because all the uh bags are they deteriorating but the new stuff definitely guys it's not worth it because those card stocks you know of those comic books you're talking about that were nice issues and stuff like that, they don't deteriorate that easily at all but and um, that's how you save and it's funny enough, bags I hate now a lot more because I've seen how much bags and boards I've been buying, but boards I can reuse because I've been donating to my uh, um, kids' uh, preschool, the cardboards. They can uh, they use that a lot, and I can use it for for a lot of things as well. So in that sense, you can do something as well good, <laughs> you know, whatever you can order. I, had to, I, have to, I have like a short box of boards. Still, I haven't touched half of my co collection yet. So imagine how much boards I've been buying. So it actually opens your mind when you start doing that. So yeah, we use we use the old boards for crafts around here as well too. Yeah. We do the same yeah. thing. They're they're really great. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they're very sturdy and that shiny part. You don't, you know, sometimes you need like markers. It's really accept markers really well. The shiny side and us are also the like preschool kids they just tore the paper part i mean how much paper they can use and, and you wonder your kids to start learning you know they drawing and stuff like that. it's really good in this way you actually know where, where your your shit is going a plastic is one ugh, really craps me because that's i don't know what to do with it i haven't yet discovered <laughs> the extra use for it because that yellowing part is like oh crabs me absolutely crazy and also if you do filing cabinets you save shit low space also the weight don't forget because filing cabinets they take a, according like you know those rails of the 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 drawer takes amount of, of weight you can actually put it inside so you definitely can save it and you can less worry about your comic books slashing like dropping to the floor or something which have never happened i had the uh, one filing cabinet now since i don't know when that i did the comic that video i did about that and it's still go holding really nicely it's i'm keep on looking i'm, I'm, I'm a bit paranoid sometimes but that reducing the cardboard thing it's really helped my my psyche to be honest because it's just like you notice how much comic books of the sh like shelves amount of space you have still left and you're like what the hell i just almost be able to fit half kind of thing so yeah yeah and i mean miss so says it and i was the same way miss so like i didn't want to do it for the longest time this is only a very very recent thing that i've done is and and yeah. like rasa was saying like the older books i still have them you know like yeah the Doctor Strange, the Strange Tales, the old Daredevil, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. They're just single right now, but it's all of the new stuff, all of the newer stuff, even 90s. the 80s stuff. I, I combine them as well to, you know, some of the independent books, you know what I mean? I've yeah. combined those as well. But uh, honestly, once you once you go that route, it's uh, it's it's easy. Once you get used to it, just get over that hump and then you're then you're yeah. good that hurdle. 
I think it's the different, you know, like you actually need to see it, those comic books, put them, see your short boxes, like uh, whatever you have, or the short box gets like what, 100 comic books, 150 comic books you can put inside. I think. Yeah, so you can probably put 200 easy, uh, maybe even a bit more if you want to squeeze and save your space. So imagine that. And also the Mylas, I would like Mylas, uh, I, I haven't seen the stock in while I was looking because I do like Mylas as well because I'm trying to reduce the amount of plastic or less of a plastic I can use and Mylas haven't seen for in stock in UK for years so maybe uh, that's what sto stock it stock problems and stuff like that so and I keep on asking my comic boy it's like yeah no <laughs> it's like nope <laughs> nope <laughs> so yeah anyway talk well, about comics I or did you have a comic you want to talk about, or should I go ahead? No, you go first. I'll okay. wait. Um, Oosh. I I double or probably triple dipped and bought this trade of OMAC that came out this week and um, read the first three issues. And I forgot how good the first two issues of OMAC are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and that opening, is it the opening page? Hello, put me together and I will be your friend. Um, <laughs> let me uh, do this. So I I think by the time OMAC came out, Jack Kirby was kind of burnt out on all the problems he had at DC. Mm -hmm. And the art isn't quite up to what it was later on in the, um, I mean, earlier on in his DC comics like his new world um new god stuff but it's still amazing and it's such a radical story of this uh -huh. crazy crazy future and yeah. with such strange emotions and kirby plunges us in into a middle of a story here and the, yeah. a bunch of these issues he just plunges you right in wow. so um omak has to destroy this woman who's <laughs> body parts in a box Mm -hmm. um and he says where does humanity stop and technology begin we no longer know lila mm -hmm. i i no longer know who i was and you lila you you and all these others things must be destroyed and then he blows up all these sort of human-like robots and then it, it takes the rest of the story to find out that they spoilers of this ancient book all of those robots are bombs so they have personalities like a human being but they're going to be sent to rich people to blow them up. Nice. Uh, so they're kind of like terrorist devices of some sort, why they want to blow up the rich people. But this, they, the hero who becomes Omak is mm -hmm. the office nebbish. And the only one who treats him nice is this girl, Lila, who shows up every once in a while, then disappears. And she's mm -hmm. actually one of these robots they've been testing. <laughs> and so, um, and then this shadowy government group, um what are they called they they all cover their faces we see them somewhere here here they are yeah uh the gpa the global protection association or something mm -hmm. they've just decided to make turn this guy buddy blank into their superhero without telling him or asking him his permission or anything with their satellite brother i yeah there's brother i and so He's in the midi middle of uh, he he's trying to find out what happened to Lila. There's the there's where they unpack all the robots and put them in their boxes. Mm -hmm. And he's going down to try to find Lila, and he turns into brother I, uh, brother I turns him into Omac, mm -hmm. and then he he has to destroy everything <laughs> to keep all the whoever that was gonna be killed by these robots safe. Yeah, it's just a crazy crazy story. Um, still very cool Jack Kirby art, but I can see that you know, he was beginning his, I think it, it took something out of him when they rejected the whole New God series. Yeah. Um, and then the second story is amazing too, because a rich person rents an entire city. All the oh, residents yeah. move out of the city. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Rasa, did you? No, 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 um, no, all, no. All the residents have to move out of the city so Mr. Big can have his party. And eventually we learned that Mr. Big's party is a trap for Brother I and Omac in the first place. That's why they, why Mr. Big was doing it. And we see the um, the inventor of Brother I and Omac there and they meet. 
there's always these moments every once in a while where Omax says, I have this vague memory of having had another life, but I can't quite reach those memories. Um, anyway, so he has to have a big fight throughout the city as all of Mr. Big's henchmen are, there's Mr. Big, mm -hmm. are attacking him. And it's, you know, all kinds of visually cool stuff and everything. And then the thing that really got me, issue three is less good, but the beginning of it, so I'm kind of viewing OMAC as this series of what could have been if Kirby had remained. So he probably knew his time at uh, DC was over, over pretty much. He only did eight issues of OMAC and then he was gone. Um, mm -hmm. But at the beginning of, of the third issue, he kind of slows things down. OMAC's just chilling on a couch with this brain thing on his head. There's the faceless uh, agents of GPA. And inside the brain thing, he's having these adventures, which he's enjoying, I guess, fighting giant monsters. But then they interrupt him in the middle of the dream to uh, introduce him to this elderly couple who they've assigned to be his fake parents to give him more of a sense of humanity. And I f I, I've only read through issue three now, and I flipped through, and as I suspected, I don't think the fake parents show back up. But uh, if only uh, Jack Kirby had kind of followed up on all the craziness about this society. I think mm -hmm. as, as it progressed, he just did just more and more giant action scenes and less um, of the weird future psychology stuff. Mm -hmm. Although there is a point somewhere near the end where uh, Omak gets turned back into Billy Blank for a while. <clears throat> I uh, I stepped out at the beginning. Is this one that he wrote and drew himself? He wrote yeah. and drew. So okay. I'm sort of postulating you Amazing. can sort of see him. He's still got that Kirby greatness, but you can see him sort of losing his enthusiasm along the way so that things are going bad at DC. But so uh, Buddy, he turns back into Buddy Blank, but Buddy Blank has no memory. And he's like, where am I? I'm on this de de desert island and stuff. Um, you can see even on the last the last issue, they have Joe Kubert uh, draw the cover because I guess Kirby was gone by the time the cover needed to be drawn. Um, and the uh, and the the issue the last issue ends. I always remembered this with a meteorite hitting Earth, mm. and it's like, what's going to happen next? There is no next issue after that. <laughs> But um, I'm kind of sad that, you know, people have brought OMAC back, but they always kind of repurposed him. I would have liked to see someone just totally explore this crazy world that Kirby had started to set up. Mm -hmm. so there's, a, there's a lot of Kirby stuff at, at DC that are like, you know, if only he'd been able to keep going. It's kind of both beautiful and painful. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think that uh, at the start, OMAC was like one of his most sort of radical takes on superheroes um, with this, you know, everybody is kind of screwed in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think he was feeling screwed by the comic book companies. Um, let's see, there was something in one of his... Uh, Oh, it, yeah, on the second page, it says, this is the climax of the story. This is the time when a hideous moment of man's abuse of his creations becomes shockingly real. And it gives you a hint of the heartbreak the world that's coming may hold. Uh -oh. And, uh, you know, Kirby has the famous quote, comics will break your heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, I, uh, I really enjoyed uh, Let's, uh, we're reading that and rereading it probably for some of these issues for like the 10th time in my life or something. Mm -hmm. it so really, is that it holds up to rereads. So it's Sorry. recolored, yes? Uh, I think I it think looks they've, like they've colored it trying to recreate the original mm -hmm. colors. Yeah, it looks very but good. But it's though. very bright, um, mm -hmm. which it probably was a bit duller on the newsprint. I'm still, I could never, I need a time machine to go back and see how bright the newsprint comics were the day you picked them up off the rack. Right. Because we're, right. we're always judging them by 20 year old or 40 or 50 year old fate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can, Did, you can um, get these digitally and everything too, if you want to, which is also a good way to read this kind of Kirby, I think. Did you, you catch say, the, um, did you catch the uh, kayfabe video where they were talking about Fantastic Four? 
and seeing the Fantastic Four story that was reprinted uh -huh. in uh, Tom Scioli's Treasury. That um, no, I missed um, that one. Or Piscor recolored it, and the recoloring looks phenomenal. Um, as uh -huh. far as like he made it still, you know, with his kind of style of doing things, yellowing the paper, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I thought the coloring was pretty fantastic. It was this man, this monster, I think the, the uh -huh. infamous thing. Story well, I have the book. I have the um, treasury size version oh, of you that do. Fantastic okay. Four yeah, books. Yeah. But I, I have to go look at that reprint then. Um, mm -hmm. Talking about Fantastic Four reprints and look at that paper. Uh, I look very like, yellow. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this is the. Um, it's uh, <clears throat> is that the essential? The, oh, a British new, version. Yeah, new amazing tales, creepy worlds. So <laughs> That's you funny. have they call it creepy. <laughs> yeah. So and but if what this has, which is actually fan very fantastic, there's a lots of extras of Ditko. And um, everyone likes the ghost story. I haven't read it yet, but I was flipping through the Ditko um, stories. And then in, in black and white, Ditko's art is really fantastic to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ditko's then, art holds up so well in all kinds yeah. of ways. And then even, even all this like paneling of those nine squares, which is very reminiscent of something. And then you have the yo-yo. You remember your yo-yos? How of the obsession people? <laughs> I had obsession when I was. I was obsessed yo -yo. by the, my butterfly yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> I love yo-yos. Yeah. I used to be getting like really hate. I used to hate it, and he looks like Spider-Man to be honest. The way Steve Ditko right, uh, draws in the in this for for, for this uh -huh. reprint. Yeah, yeah, with that sweater especially. Yeah. Eh? yeah. So, but it's in blue, in black and white, and also there's a, a man who captured death, which is look as just like a black cover and stuff and uh, it, it does draw uh, old men really nicely and it's in black and white so you, you can see it's really nice so yeah, are, yeah it's really great. this one's uh actually getting quite expensive because of the you know like the fantastic four this is not like the only time i will own a fantastic four number two because this is reprints of that and right. the number two fantastic four now is like fucking crazy price so this is really good uh to read that stuff so and he goes right at the end of the page the last page is still a comic book so <laughs> which is fantastic right in the back cover. that's amazing and that's still still ditko yeah i think you, you sent me a couple of uh, yeah. those, uh british yeah. reprints in the past yeah, yeah. yeah so it's nice to look at definitely those reprints really work for me black I, I i love those british reprints i don't know why just seeing the same comics from a different angle it's kind yeah. of uh, yeah yeah it's um uh, a proof comic, it's called. That's production. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, in interesting to just look at that old stuff. So, right, uh, it's me. My turn now. Yes, Damien, yes. I guess. We we. Uh, so I'll talk about this. Um, Batman Adventure continues yes. number issue two. Nice. Absolutely fantastic. I love it even more now. I mean, the storyline is really kind of actually more intriguing than anything else. Um, and uh, the dead man in here is hilarious. So dead man is talking to Batman and, and Dick and um, uh, Damien. I think Damien in here, yes. Um, uh, he, they're talking to like, oh, Batman is going cuckoo. And, and, and um, Nightwing says, no, 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 uh, this is the dead man. He's talking to dead man. So Batman is still okay. And then Deadman hops into Alfred's uh, body, and just having just because he wants to talk to Nightwing. Oh, come on, yeah. So it's fantastic, and he's like, "Oh, look, the old boy. Let's try this old body." And it's like, "Oh, uh, funnily enough, he looks like a very, very uh, like you know, very flexible for his age and stuff like that." So there is this um, uh, Court of Owls uh, storyline continues in this issue, and you have zombies uh, apparently. Wow. That's how Court of Owls has had a um, resurrections and stuff. And there's this uh, guy uh, dying, and they go to funeral, and then they're following this. And it's really good story. Uh, it's just I want us to see this in animation because it's just so much like those reactions of the face. Da da da. This is a bit of a spoiler here, but anyway. Um, it's really good. Uh, Storyline flows. The the art is just as what you expect. To be from animated so this series. This is a currently coming out comic. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sucked me yeah. back into Batman. Yeah. This is this is what Batman. I kind of like. I I would never. I probably not get tired of reading. Not that old serious, old broody kind of Batman you just dig out all the yeah. time, but you know that kind, of, this kind of Batman who you know mm -hmm. just doing his work and stuff like that. So, yeah, really good. Um, so th this is the second volume, I guess, of this series. Adme the yeah. Batman Adventure continues season two, as you you guys see here. Um, yeah, so the first one has six issues, which I have not read, but uh, Mr. Terrence Comic Crack has been. Uh, showing that off and I was like oh I have to try and honestly if you enjoy Batman series that's a nice cover animated series in generally you should definitely get that I can't wait to read that one because I really enjoyed this number issue yeah. too so looking forward this, just, uh, this week number three just came out I yeah. just picked it today gorgeous gorgeous cover I love this cover and I agree with you it's such a fun book um mm -hmm. if they I haven't read this one yet but if they if they go for uh they can keep this series going on for as long as they want, and I'm I'm absolutely just yeah. pick up every single one. I really Honestly, really love it. Worth everything. It's just the way it's written, and yeah, it's really good. Fantastic. Yeah, it's exactly like that, Andrew Lopez continuation yeah. from the show. Yeah, you know, really fantastic. And the sh the show really is still one of the best versions of Batman you're gonna find. So yeah, yeah, that's yes, that's a really Scott smart Conan, way to go. You have zombies in here, but they are like really, really cool, like really fast zombies. Um, but that's how they taking the story of Court of Owls. I guess I'm not. I haven't really finished the the original Court of Owls, like what whatever the Scott Snyder has created it. Uh, but I there's one thing I was like. What a Batman does to actually find out. Oh, where is that thing? They shows this. Oh, you, they find the finger, and they having a conversation about this finger there. So they find the finger, and he's just having this conversation with Batman, and it's like Batman. I was like, I'm gonna do all of these things. I'll find out exactly how everything goes. And he's wearing this tiara thing, which Satana gave him, which is fantastic. Look at Batman with the tiara. How is that? Look, the golden one. He's like all for seeing eye. Because That's he went right. to Satana to to ask help for for to you know like because of a dead man and all the spirits floating around. Fantastic! Satana is fantastically uh, in here, but she hasn't been prominent in this one. But yeah, really good. I'm Absolutely. jealous of Miss So when she does get to watch it for the first. Oh time. yes, you have uh, plenty of yeah, good time. Uh, so the, the owls, the owls are kind of zombies themselves in a way. Yeah, they dig them out and they re re they have the serum. They they plant them inside and they re re reanimate them. So interesting that the animated show version here is what's continuing Scott Snyder's idea about the owls, which I don't think are a big deal in the regular <laughs> universe anymore. Yeah, but very and I like cool. I'm gonna have to go see if my shops have have those issues because I need those. I like the owls and, and talents and all that stuff. I think it's quite interesting creation, talents, especially. That's the word, right? Yeah, and that's what they. Um, it's apparently, of course, the age of them. You know, like they were way before the bad tea actually came into Gotham. Right. So they have this history, and then anybody who can discover, you know, like just another plotline who, which without Batman, can be actually written because it would be fantastic having somebody else in Gotham before Batman having to do whatever they were doing. And those, you know, those mafioso at times, imagine the owl pounce and like, <laughs> you know, those, like, I'm going to shoot you down. It's like, and then, oh, I'm an owl. You know, that kind of stuff. And here That's come the talons. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so very fantastic to read. I highly recommend it's $3.99 a comic. Yeah. DC typical, but <laughs> honestly, every page worth the, 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 scr the scroll. You know, even though those ads, and I'm going to talk about the ads in a book, comic book, which completely like uh, gave me into another world of discovery, which I didn't know I needed. But anyway, we'll talk later about it. Are we talking about X-ray glasses? <laughs> <laughs> you can always rely on Scott Connor to come up Party with another car. one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, what um, have you got next? For, for Oh, sorry. For Miss Soul, they have the collections on uh, Blu-ray. It's well worth it. And then once you've watched those, highly recommended to watch uh, uh, Batman Beyond as well, because the same mm -hmm. Batman actor, uh, Kevin. Anyway, he, he appears 
in the yeah. Batman Beyond as well too, and it's a fantastic mm-hmm. series, kind of continuing right. that story. Yeah. I also love the Brave and the Bold, but that's a completely different style. So do I. I thought Ooh, Brave love and the it. Bold was so much fun, so much fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the best version of Silver Age DC or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Better than the actual Silver Age comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. an absolute blast. Me and my son plowed through those, and those were incredible. Really, really great. Yeah. I could watch the game. Um, I, don't, I don't want to do this to you, Rasa, but... Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. I got that, too. Yeah. Is it good? I haven't, I haven't, read, it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, oh. But it looks absolutely gorgeous. I just picked it up today. I couldn't Who's created resist. team? I had to give it a shot. Um, the artist Al- is Javier Al- Rodriguez. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's oh, oh no. Alvaro. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong thing. Alvaro Lopez's letters. Yeah. It's like he's channeling Jim Starenko, I feel like. It's cool. And maybe some other things. Gorgeous, man. It's Oh, you, you damn you people. I can't wait to read this. I couldn't resist. Is it four ninety nine? No. Three ninety nine. Um three ninety nine. Oh. Your your oh, shop might still have some, Rasa. Oh yeah, we will have number ones usually, yeah, especially Marvel. Thank now you. on the downside, I did read it. Oh, you oh, did? Shit. Okay. So the and story it's just so kind of okay. It doesn't the, okay. the story doesn't live up to the art. Oh I see. Okay. A lot of the story is kind of, it's almost like half the issue is um, backfill or something. What's the right word for it? You know, uh, info Mm -hmm. dump or something. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. But uh, hopefully as the story gets going and if the artist stays. Which is what's not going to (laughs) happen. It's definitely worth buying just for the art anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I've seen stuff by this artist before that was good, but not at this level. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he finally let him do whatever he can, you know? Like, yeah. We just need to let out and be free. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Given the given the reins. Um, so the one that I did read, though, um, I tucked into Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion, uh, mm. number seven. Um, man, I tell you, like, all of these dc horror have really jumped on my radar this is one that i wasn't familiar with um but uh a, a kaluta cover there first of all so i mean let's just soak oh, up geez. that fantastic cover i love this cover so much um, yeah Seems and then like the first an story... endless number of these <laughs> these comics <laughs> yeah. right and then just he also cover. does uh this kind of uh splash pinup intro as well Ooh. too uh which is pretty like great it. And then in the first story, we get um, the one and only Howard Chaikin with, uh, I don't know if the first name is uh, Tony. Is it Tony de Zuniga? De yeah, Zuniga. That's, that's how I pronounce it. It's tricky yeah. to pronounce. Um, this, mm-hmm. It's called uh, Eye of the Beholder. So this oh, one, sure. you know, with all of these kind of horror stories, you always, at least I always do, I feel like um, they sort of, you know, They have their quote unquote twist ending, which most often isn't really a twist ending. It's just an ending. You can sort of see it coming, but (laughs) the journey is part of the fun, right? So this one kind of got me because I was expecting the twist ending and it absolutely wasn't. And not only was it not that twist ending, so this guy gets caught in a spider web, this giant spider. He gets Mm -hmm. rescued by this woman and brought back to um, this castle where her and her father live. And uh, her sister, who's just coming back from visiting relatives or whatever the story was, she's coming back mm-hmm. to the house. And I mean, as it goes, he he kind of has these dreams where he's still trapped by the giant spider and stuff. And the spider shows up in these visions. So, of course, you think that maybe this is all stuff that's in his head. And he really is, you know, the last panel is going to be him um, trapped in the spider's web and getting eaten or whatever it's going to be. Turns out that's Mm -hmm. not the case. Turns out that the sister is a giant spider and he has to blindfoldedly choose which sister he loves and kiss each of them. (laughs) And he ends up falling in love with the giant spider. Oh my God. Bizarre twist kind of like, I don't even know what the hell it's about. This was a fantastic story. I really, really got into that. That is great. And the art looks so good. The art is beautiful. Yeah, the art is really great. 
Um, so that one was a lot of fun. Uh, the other stories were just okay. Um, the second one, it was like a, a, a kind of a, um, he had created this serum to give you youth, you know what I mean? Um, uh, yeah, and it was just okay. And what was the third tale? <laughs> the third story was the royal right. So uh, Joe Orlando, uh, Bob Kaniger, art by Bill Drought. Um, the art was pretty great on this one. I like this. And this was kind of like this uh, rich baron, I guess, of this city. And just kind of him flaunting everything. You know, the fact that he was uh, above everybody else. And someone buys a new car. He's the one that's going to drive it first and smashes it up. Someone's having mm -hmm. a fancy dinner. He's the one that's going to sit and eat the dinner at the head of the table. Um, <laughs> someone's going to get married. And he's the one who's going to deflower the woman before uh, oh, of course her, he is. <laughs> her wedding. And it turns Ooh. out the one who takes is, uh, of course, a vampire. And she has her way with him. And that's kind of our last panel. So that was nice. kind of fun. Um, cool. So this, is a, this was a fun, a fun, fun read. But really worth it just for that first story just the strangeness of that first story um and taking that very odd turn so i'm gonna keep my eyes out i don't think there was that many of this maybe 12 issues maybe 14 yeah, I, I don't right. remember how many issues but um didn't run for suit uh very very long and 1972 is this one so september october 1972. Mm -hmm. so yeah good time. times very good looks interesting yeah. especially that one with spider but ugh. yeah just ridiculous but uh <laughs> it's nice to see some chaken you know what i mean it's nice to see some of him in there yeah so it was chaken pencils with the zuniga inking it just i'm, I'm guessing so it yeah just says, right, did a lot of inking and then sometimes pencils so um that's an yeah. interesting combo though, them as the art because they're very different styles of uh right yeah the Sorry. Uh, yeah there we go. Oh. yeah yeah they didn't give a lot of details <laughs> back then in credits at dc no mm -mm. Yeah, i would robert assume desiniga's inking um, robert kaniger is a very good writer so to follow up i guess i'll talk about this mystery book that i read Man, um i guess i might as well do this uh Special effect. Special effect again. Oops, that looks wrong. Ooh. Let's try like that. What happened? It's frozen. Choppy. Okay. I guess my special effect is not working. Okay. Uh, back to me. Um, so I read uh, a House of Mystery, which has a Bernie Ryston cover. I use this as the icon to this mm -hmm. this episode. Um, and inside. It's it's got two new stories and two reprints. I think it, they might have uh, when they were doing these exercise books in 1971, they might have thrown in more reprints. Um, but the first story, which is the cover story, is on the inside. Oh, this, this thing is falling apart. Is uh, is an Alex Toth art. Ooh, and uh, everyone loves Alex Toth, and I feel like the odd man out. I, oh no! I'm kind of slowly appreciating him more. Um, <laughs> it's it's kind of it's cool looking art, but mm -hmm. it's very it's it's so stylized. Mm -hmm. At times, it, the characters almost look like they're made out of paper cutouts or something to me. Um, so it's interesting to look at, but I, I still don't quite get why he's like to some people the greatest american comic book artist that ever existed but and i mean i guess to be fair like it's not necessarily that's not necessarily his best stuff in these horror anthologies it could be yeah but, yeah yeah i it don't know where to find his there. best stuff because yeah, yeah everything he did was kind of obscure right mm -hmm. um but but this this is a very interesting art style and everything i'm not putting it down i'm just i always whenever i read toth it's like oh i know every artist thought he was the greatest art he was the artist's artist um, and this one is is kind of a, a bit of a jumbled story about a guy who marries a rich woman, but she turns out to be a horrible nag. And all he wants to do is is read his magic books. <laughs> so um, and through his magic books, he finds a way to um, seem to be dead and then come back to life. So he shoots his, his evil wife and tells the girl who's been nice to him, 
to claim the body after he's executed, after he's hung. Um, but and all of this, the hanging and everything happens off stage, so it's not visually interesting that way. But um, when she goes to claim his body, they've cremated it, so he can't bring himself back to life. So that's the, the t this horror twist. Um, and then at the back is a story that is drawn by my favorite uh, Nestor Redondo. And um, so both these stories are written by Jack Olek, who is not someone I know a whole lot about, but I'm thinking I don't really like Jack Olek writing that much. <laughs> so uh, the Nestor Redondo art was good, not as good as in Rima. Mm. Um, I'm still waiting for that Rima experience again. Um, <laughs> but uh, this one, what was it about? It was about... Um, I can't even remember the story. I just remember not liking it. It's about a nobleman who, um, I can't even remember what the story was about. Uh -oh. Anyway, uh, so it was fun to see the Nestor Redondo art. And then the middle was a reprint, two reprints from much older, like 1950s House of Mystery. One is a drawn by Russ Heath. There's no, no credits. And when I looked it up, it just said Russ Heath. Mm -hmm. with the living wave when you try to get this treasure the living wave will come attack you <laughs> wow. and the living wave chases this guy across like desert landscapes and stuff wow um, <laughs> and it slowly gets smaller and smaller oh, and wow. uh, eventually it dries out entirely <laughs> right so right. he outruns it he outruns it, but it wow. turns out, well, he gets help from a helicopter, first in his boat, then a helicopter, then he's running. But then it turns out at the end uh, that his girlfriend has thrown the treasure back in the ocean. So it might be the living wave would continue to come after him somehow, except mm -hmm. she threw it back. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Jack Kirby drawn one called the negative man. And they're Ooh. experimenting with some new kind of electricity. And this mm -hmm. guy gets shocked and this, uh, creature just comes out of his body this energy creature and this mm -hmm. is like 1958 and i just sort of feel like it's uh prefiguring some kind of marvel type of uh, visuals and stuff mm -hmm. um so they it, it, it's not much of a story they just sort of uh run after the energy creature as it creates havoc around the city and eventually discover all that all they have to do to get rid of it is have the guy who it came out of touch it again and it goes back into him. So, um, yeah, so this was not one of my best. <laughs> I really enjoyed the artwork in here, but the stories weren't that great. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if anyone knows anything about Jack Olek. Um, I feel like he was kind of a standard DC writer at the time, but at least judging by these two stories in here, they weren't, weren't that great. It's interesting. I mean, Toth, was the artist's artist, but they don't hire Toth to do the covers. They hire Ber the very young Bernie Wrightston to do the covers. Yeah, as I think you can see it in his, uh, people's face ex expressions. I do like Vincent Price movies. <laughs> um, in fact, I was thinking about some that I'd like to rewatch. Like one of my favorites is the one about the, um, the actor, the Shakespearean actor who gets revenge on all his critics. I think it's called Theater of Blood or something. And so each critic is killed in the manner of a different Shakespearean play. And I really like the, uh, what's it called? The, the Mask of the Red Death that mm -hmm. he did. Toast could get more out of one line than anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble for bad, I get in trouble for bad mouthing. <laughs> uh, John says that uh, creepy. Yeah, so I should check out the creepy Toth um, mm. in the magazine Creepy. I mean, he might have been a creepy yeah. guy, too. <laughs> I think he was just, uh, he was a difficult person, I think, from what I've read about Toth. Yeah, very difficult from what I understand, too, yeah. So what have you got next to show us? Oh, sorry, Terry. Around apologies are super sorry. fun. They're a blast. They're just a lot of fun. I love picking those up. They're generally, you can find them for pretty cheap. And they're always just kind of a, a quick, fun read. Oh, yeah. you, The House of Mystery. The House yeah. Of mystery. And yeah, just any of those, those kind DC of DC mystery bags. Or ones, yeah. Always worth it. Yeah, and I, I would say that even, you know, I had a great time reading this, even though I didn't love any of the stories, just because it was yep. a, a whole bunch of different cool artists. 
Oh. And always some little imaginative twist, like the uh, the living oh, water. You okay, Rasa? Rasa is um, being... Yeah, my my thingy doesn't want to work. The court of owls is out to get you, and they're into Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what's happened. Oh, can I change? Oh, maybe I can. Oh, no, I can't. Son of a bitch. Oh, wait. Nope. I guess Scott Connor knows a lot about Toph. We'll have to talk oh, wait, to him look. about it sometime. Ah, am, I, am I here? Am I here? What a oh, nice yeah. keyboard. <laughs> oh, shit, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the miss. mess is now revealed. Yeah. Behind uh, the scenes. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to see the mess, you people. Oh, that's what happens when you don't have webcam. Ah, it doesn't matter. I'm right. cheap. I'm cheap. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, finally. Uh, come on, work with me, camera. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're there still there. We can see you. Okay. I'm going to be in slow motion, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Anyway. We can um, see you and hear you. It's good. Oh, is it? Okay. Maybe I can't see myself. Then. <laughs> anyway, so Jeremiah, finally, thanks to um, a uh, Mr. Comic Crack once again, a, he's been sending me this, uh, Jeremiah, and it's like, oh, no, it's a um, religious name. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> But I'm, I'm very silly, by the way, thinking like that. Because to my stupidity, I didn't look inside because that's what happens sometimes. But uh, uh, because I'm doing all this um, organizing of my comic books and stuff, I was like, ooh, I missed something. And I opened it up and I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I see. Oh, nice. Uh, so Herman is absolutely fantastic. I start to uh, like looking, you know, because it's such a pity because the way it's been reprinted, it cuts out such a two great lengths of because it's a um, European format. Mm -hmm. uh, they cut out so much of the and shrink it to, to suit the market, and you lose the ability of seeing the beauty. So this one is a. Um, so this is a European. See, I don't have a context. This is a European comic. That's and this yes, but being English reprinted. Language edition. Yes, it's being reprinted. Uh, I think Comic Comic Crack has more to to it to add because I just read this. This so it's uh, the way it was released by this um, Adventure Comics. So they released two uh, two issues for one storyline, and they released three of them. Uh, and that's the only uh, contact I have. Think it's been released in, in in that, and then that was released an omnibus format, three right. volumes. And unfortunately, of course, they are been reprinted a long time ago, and they're really pricey. Um, so uh, and I, I don't know because the omnibuses has almost the similar content content I think, or maybe a bit more, but I'm not sure because I have not seen it. And I would definitely want to have it because hopefully they that dark horse has made a bigger style of art, like uh, expanded the art, because basically what happened is to the world, world went into craziness, like what we have, uh, this wars, things happen, and we basically revert back into an era where simple life has been farming, you know, you have those more wooden walls to protect yourself from things. Um, and then we follow this, uh, I don't know how we call it um, that area, like where people like like one part of that, like like a group of people, uh, and they're traveling back home. Like but a then, wagon train or something. Yeah, and but yeah, there's like you know those in um, the Western times, you have this um, like a fort, uh, uh, it's a fort for people, you know, to 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 be staying and protecting themselves because apparently people are absolutely mad after the times so after reverting to being a uh, in in this simple times and life we follow this uh, kid in here he's going back uh, he's supposed to be coming back together with this traveling team of them but he of course gets distracted and because what it, when he gets distracted for because i think he's lost his pony um, and he's trying to get it back, the pony, to come back. But he's, you know, the pony's not very listening to him. So he's trying to do that. And there's this character comes in, the friend of his. And he, the way he's wearing things, it looks like a tangerel because of the helmet. But yeah. it's, a, it's a male counterpart. Mm -hmm. But the art is absolutely fantastic. So they get in Gafufu, basically. And um, and then they see, they have to hide because there's this rich guy 
of course, you have always the rich guys who will uh, sit in the carriage. This is this is the bastard. That's the one. That's the one <laughs> who has too much money and doesn't know what to do with himself. Anyway, so he has this. Uh, they going traveling, and then basically, I guess they murder. So they he basically murdered the whole pl uh, that place where the the fort they were living. Uh, I don't know if you can see me because I oh yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so because of he feels guilty, the boy, and it's basically the, that's where the story starts with him and traveling and getting in trouble. He wants the revenge. Then he went to travel through the town to find that fat bastard. Um, and then because of what he's trying to find, he gets in trouble. And then they were trying to kill. And the story just goes forward. And it's an absolute breeze. And I love it. Um, uh, it's such a beautiful art to look at. It's, of course, it's, uh, I know why Comic Crack sent this to me. Because it's right up my alley. Because I'm a huge Blueberry fan. And always have been. So this is really just making me a little bit more obsessed now. Thankfully, I do have, due to Comic Crack, uh, sending me all those three stories in English in the comic book format so I definitely will read more of it so there's the heirs and there's another story which I forgot the name of um so yeah uh, the art is absolutely fantastic birds of, birds of prey might have been the other one if I remember correctly no this one is birds of prey the first oh, one birds of prey. oh yeah okay the heirs yeah 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 yeah, yeah. there's oh, okay it's gonna go when forward. do you know when these came out Terrence like in Europe um, um I'm just looking at it because I've got them in some other formats too, which I'll show you once. Uh, mm -hmm. Ross, uh, yeah. First just, printing, were they black and white in Europe too? So early, 80s. early 80s. Right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Way advanced compared to American comics at that time. And you, you see beautiful. they get in confrontation. It's just, it's a really, really well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, the beauty of this, that fat bastard got his um, punishment because he is obsessed with his birds, eagles, I think, or, you know, like those uh, prey birds. And he's being like, he's always needs to feed them live, live prey, otherwise they will be dead. And the way he got, um, what happened to him, that fat bastard, what happened to him, uh, it was fantastic in second issue. <laughs> I was like, yes! The rich die, <laughs> but the way he did, and then yeah, it just continues to being beauty. So this is issue two, and it just continues to have a absolute stellar artwork, and it's uh, the scenes is just it's yeah, it's I would say right up my alley. I'm a big of fan uh, of this. And this guy, and then there's this boy who they're fighting, basically, they go and venture together. And then he's the one who is basically has the brains almost. And, and they really fight all the time. And he dresses up as a girl to pretend to be a girl. And it's, <laughs> it's like just to, to get his way of, and he has this idea how to deal with it. And it was just beautiful to see. And as I say, I really, honestly, looking at that again, I want to, like, you know, I have two more stories to read. So I'm really happy. But. Honestly, it's the beauty of Herman and what he was able to do in that era. So, yeah, yep. Amazing. And then, unfortunately, we don't have that many reprints. So, yeah. A lot of people talking about how expensive it is to, to yeah. buy the omnibus or collection or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, so, if, um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rasa. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just see Monsieur Maurice was saying there's 38 books of Jeremiah and still going on, published in color. Yeah. Ah, don't so, say uh, that. It's not in English. <laughs> Fantagraphics did a couple of soft cover volumes. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two of them, and they did them in color, um, and they're mm -hmm. more like the album size. Um, oh, nice. So there was this, uh, mm -hmm. Survivor's Talon of Blood, and mm -hmm. then the Eyes That Burned from uh, Fantagraphics, mm -hmm. and then um, Comcat, or Catalan, sorry. Catalan also did some volumes. I mean, it says Jeremiah 13 up there, so I'm guessing that means this is the 13th volume in the series. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, they're on, even on the spine. It has a 13, and these are in color as well. This one was, I mean, I, I love all of the Jeremiah stuff that I've read, but I really, really love this book quite a bit, this strike. And mm -hmm. then um, there was a couple of Dark Horse Omnibus as well, too. I've only ever managed to find the first one and honestly like people talking about amazon prices like don't look at amazon amazon are just 
it's just shit. They always have ridiculous prices on stuff. And this is um, color as well, too. And I think in this volume, Rasa, I think this one collects the mini series that you have there. Both yeah, of them, yeah, yeah. Correctly. I know that they're collected in, in one of these versions that I have. But um, oh, cool. this is really nice because it's nice, thick volume as well, too. I and just like the black and white, side. though, that Rasa was showing. The black and white is gorgeous, yeah. So it'd be nice to have black and white that size, maybe. Right. Yes. I would love to have that as well. But those uh, omnibus, somebody on, on eBay, I saw some guy selling it, say he wants, was the hundred something, a hundred pounds for three volumes of omnibuses, which is kind of okay, but still a hundred pounds, you know, like it's not, doesn't, right. for me, it doesn't lying around for that kind of stuff, you know, like for- But Andrew right. found 450 <laughs> for one yeah. volume. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know a lot about. I guess you guys are saying eBay is a much better way to go than Amazon. It's it, it it'll de you'll definitely be able to find something cheaper there. I wouldn't go to Amazon for anything, honestly. Like mm -hmm. eBay will be the place because then you also have the opportunity to kind of you know make an offer on stuff. You might stumble onto a lot. I mean, you know, it's it's patience just like with anything. But I mean, yeah. it is unfortunate that places don't reprint this stuff. And again, it's the classic. We say it every time we look at European stuff. It's just not as readily available in English and it's just not, they don't keep up with it. Cause I mean, Dark Horse to, to reprint these volumes oh. would be amazing. That would be fantastic to have more of these. I love uh, mm -hmm. the size, but honestly, like I do have a real soft spot for these soft cover volumes. I think they're great. And like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that Fantagraphics only ever did these two and they titled it uh, The Survivors. Um, so it wasn't yeah. uh, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing too. Maybe maybe typing in survivors and fantagraphics into eBay will get some other results, especially if people don't yeah. really know what it is that they have. You might yeah. find cheaper uh, prices that way as well. Yeah, because I typed in on eBay in UK for Herman things, and they were just putting a like, couple of like those single issues you just gave it to me, and also the omnibus that they the floppies they weren't like those trades, but they weren't even there as a, as uh -huh. an option. So yeah, definitely yeah. probably gonna try to do the survivors because I want the bigger format. I like the black and white for sure, but I definitely if I want to just like really look closely because it's just it's such a shame when it goes like such a little box for such an art you know like this kind of art and scenery right. has to be explained like expanded as far as it can go <laughs> yeah. you know it's just a of the art oh and here we go sorry just oh. to tempt you even further oh shut so uh, at the back oh, of this up. volume of this hardcover one it kind uh -huh. of talks about the history of it too i'm just seeing here as uh -huh. a flip it's been forever since i've read this volume it might be time to reread it so some photos, and then they also talk about the different versions um, in the magazines that they came out in, you know, and the different versions that they came out. Yeah. Um, and then they even show a fistful of sand as well, too. So from the adventure yeah. comics there. That's the one I'm going to read next. Stuff. That's the next story in, in, for my reading list, the fistful of sand. <laughs> and then one of the one of the fans did a sculpture and sent it to him. I Absolute guess is what this fantastic. is. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, and they're they're just really really good stories. Like they're really really yeah. great. And absolutely, Earl Grey. I'm pretty sure he has a video on that series. He yeah. absolutely pull off a phenomenal looking volume off his shelf. You know, it would be within arm's reach. I'm sure. Yeah, the German uh, they don't have to do it the proper printing and they all have all the translations and stuff like that because it seems to be every single time especially european stuff i mean he has always show something amazing on that stuff but honestly i have never even thought to look at because i was like you know like you know you get you you think then you get distracted which i i get all the time distracted with reading comic books but looking inside is like oh wow and it's like i read those two issues like in succession quickly it's like my eyes just like oh no why i don't why i hate you to comic crack why are you doing this to me <laughs> like it's too many it's like it's too good for me you know like it's just it's my weak point well, again, you know that's, that. that's the beauty of some of those smaller indie labels like because that was the first time i discovered it those issues there i found in like a dollar bin or a 50 cent bin right i yeah. hadn't heard of it before so it was a really good you know hey this looks interesting i'll check it out and then same experience mm -hmm. 
I read him and I'm like, this is phenomenal. This is ridiculously good, you know, for some company that puts out kind of not that mm -hmm. great the other adventure comic stuff it's a hit and miss to say the least right so yeah well it seems like the market is ripe for someone to try to put out good european editions in english again you know with the whole right. book market exploding with graphic novels um people tried in the past and it didn't work but i don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe it's just me wishing that that would be the case but it seems like yeah they ought to be successful yeah. Yeah, it's just well, I mean, uh, there's definitely so... the people in our circle would be eating this stuff up, you know, <laughs> yeah. from sales. Yeah. Well, well, maybe when the the current, like my daughter's generation and your daughter and son's generation, grow up and they've been used to reading those young adult graphic novels, they'll be like looking for adult stuff, and then they can really tap the European market. Right. Right. It's, it's drive me nuts. Incredible disappearing Rasa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is what's going to happen. Oh. Well, um, I think it it is uh, Terrence's turn to show us something else if he has got okay. more. Um, let's go to let's go to this one, which was a, a super fun read of my week as well. To uh, issue of Brave and the Bold with Batman and uh, my man the Spectre. Your man. The um, Spectre. You know, I mean. I won't rave about it more than I usually do, but uh, there's sunshine coming in there. Um, it's It was such a fun issue. Really, really great. Um, so uh, Jim Corrigan meets somebody on the train and kind of strikes up a conversation. There's a problem uh, ahead on the tracks, and uh, the specter kind of leaves his body to go and, of course, save the day by holding up uh, the bridge so the train can pass freely. <laughs> Um, it's interesting the way that they kind of use the specter in these stories, because there's moments where he seems very unlike the specter in this one specifically, he spends the first kind of half of the story. So Jim Corrigan, he comes back to kind of regenerate in Jim Corrigan's body. Cause every time he's out of his body, he starts to kind of lose his power and Jim Corrigan is gone. He's, he's been kidnapped. So he goes to the only detective that he knows, which is Batman. So he can find his host body um and the kind of mystery ensues from there so but it's interesting the dynamics between batman and the specter because i mean you do they do a really good job of setting the stage that you know uh the specter is a goddamn powerful entity and he could pretty much do anything except all of a sudden when he uh i, I just point out that panel of batman riding on the oh. back of the specter as they fly i love that uh except he can't find specter. his own body <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but then when he's, you know, this mystery trying to tie it into another character and it turns out it's this couple that have been kind of doomed. I think this is now 300 years since they've kind of been reunited. So they use Jim Corrigan's host body to be the host for this uh, male spirit so they can be reunited again. Um, and it's it just, it's really fun. It has that kind of gothic vibe to it you know again touching back on the dc horror stuff um the art is really enjoyable uh i love that face there on our bearded man i think the textures and the shading on his face yeah. is really really nice um so it was just a fun fun story and at the end when specter kind of you get a little bit of the wrath of specter and as he's going to punish them batman is kind of you know trying to tell him no um but again, this is it's the moment where Spectre is kind of just overpowering and just saying, no, I'm going to I'm going to do my own version of justice here. Um, and of course, then we get to the beautiful page where he fights the, the, the one guy turns into a big monster and literally throwing planets at each other. Uh, and it's just super fun. So, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic book really great i mean i don't know how many times specter or dead man or phantom stranger for that matter appeared in brave and the bold but uh i love when these pop up because they're always dirt cheap i guess brave and the bold at least in my area isn't a, a really highly sought i'm sure that there's issues that are key issues but in general i find them for a dollar or two you know they're really not that expensive i think this one cost me a buck if i remember right so I, super fun I, 
I, mean, I guess they could use the brave and the bold to tell any story they wanted. They just have to stick Batman in it, and then they can right. tell the story they want. Yeah, that and makes it a fun, it, a fun place to look for odd, odd story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything okay, Rasa? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid camera is giving me shit. I hate <laughs> yeah, it. you're a little out of sync, but at least we can see and hear you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can be like, bleh, bleh, like speak like a fucking ma maniac soon. Anyway, it's the it's it's the specter. He's he's screwing up your camera. Oh that's yeah, right. I've been uh, bad mouthing some comic books, and that's what happens, you know. Karma, <laughs> it's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna try my share screen again. Let's see if I can make technology work once again. Let's see. Um, there we go. Special effects. So. Ooh. There was a bunch of hype about this new woman who's doing the comic strip Nancy. Okay. Which I think when I was a kid it was called Nancy Ann Sluggo, and Sluggo is still in it. I'm not sure if I'm remembering mm -hmm. that right or wrong. And I just I discovered that the hardback for it was only fifteen dollars. And I think I ordered it online with a bunch of other books and got it for even less. But that's a nice hardback for fifteen dollars. <laughs> and I can't I know that I saw Nancy and Sluggo comics when I was a kid reading the newspaper, but I don't remember anything about them. So I don't know if this at all has the vibe of the old Nancy comics. Um, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of um, Peanuts and also a lot of, uh, well, not really the comic strip Kathy, but I don't know if you remember the comic strip Kathy it was all about the worries of a, a young female at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be a lot about the current anxieties of maybe the 20 something female sort of embedded into this kid's comic. Cause there's a lot of stuff about how, uh, how cell phones have taken over our lives and things like that. And relationship like Sluggo is, is like her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it has kind of a pleasing art style. When you're reading it all, like I, I read this much all at once, so uh, mm -hmm. what, 80, 80 pages, it feels very repetitive after a while, but I guess that's true with a lot of comic strips. And I guess one of the significant things is Nancy's been going for like 80 or 90 years and uh, always done by men. And this is the first time a woman has done it. And I, I suspect a kind of young woman, they don't show her picture. Uh, there is a self-portrait of the artist somewhere in the back. Let's see. Oh, that's the... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll show you that other stuff, too. Oh, where did the self-portrait go? That's all this happens when you start looking. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There's your self-portrait, so you can't really tell. Oh, look at that. And that's, like... that's a based on some famous drawing, I think, also. Um, yeah. So yeah, in the back they have her doing <laughs> Nancy fan art of Nancy by Olivia James in uh -huh. the pearl earring from Rembrandt. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what that's based on. That's a that Jesus picture. The, um, Nancy Psycho in the style of cul-de-sac. I don't know cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. um, Whistler's mother, I think, as Nancy. Oh, Nancy has this aunt. Um, what's her name? Aunt. I'll, I'll remember it later. Um, Sailor moon, Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Princess Nancy like Snow White. Anyway, so um, I think if the problem in comparing it to Peanuts is it's not nearly as good as Peanuts. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to go with kind of a, a Peanuts kind of vibe, and that kind of comic strip where they sometimes are reflecting on childhood issues, but often really reflecting adult issues. Um, it's kind of fun. And she also plays plays occasionally with uh, the meta, meta stuff, you know, like where an eraser appears and threatens Nancy to be erased if she doesn't say something good about the artist. Um, sorry, I'm probably flipping by too quickly. So anyway, given the price, I was really happy to buy this and I enjoy reading it. I did sort of, after a while, feel a bit tired of the endless jokes about using cell phones or like, uh, here's Sluggo in bed. I've been binge watching TV all day and he's watching on his laptop. 
I need to do something. I need to make a change. And his changes, he just changes his position in bed to continue binging watching TV. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like the self-aware 20 something who feels bad about all the technology they use, but can't stop. Um, there's her aunt. What's the, I wish I could remember the, the aunt's kind of an interesting addition. So there are adults who show up to this teacher who's the head of the robotic club that she's reluctantly a member of. Um, well, and, and, she, and the aunt was, uh, the aunt was the main focus of the strip early on, like when it started and oh, Nancy really? was oh, really? kind of the, the secondary character. And then she ended up taking over the strip from what I understand of the history uh -huh. of it. So it might not have originally been called Nancy. A lot of strips did that where someone would take over, like even Crazy Cat, I think, took over from some other strip. So I think for a while I kind of fought against, against it. I wanted it to be more about children and not about teenagers and 20-somethings with their cell phones. But um, I got into the groove and, and enjoyed it quite a bit. So have you read some other Nancy, uh, Terrence? Um, I, I just have that one book that I talked about, I don't know, a month ago or something. I don't okay, know where I, I put it now, but I, I haven't read a ton of Nancy stuff, uh -huh. no. I don't feel like it's, uh, I mean, it's been around forever, but I never hear, it's not like a, a fan favorite comic strip or anything. But uh the critics went That's, really wild over this. Exactly. Maybe if and you, also other artists, they went wild for it too, just because wow. of the stuff that he was doing within those she, strips. He was doing, yeah. Uh, sorry, I mean the original ones, the the, um, oh, the, the original. original artist. Yeah, yeah. So the original ones were uh, pretty unique in the or pretty dynamic in the approach to art? They were, and they did a lot of that breaking the fourth panel or the fourth wall oh, too, I guess, okay. fourth panel to be a thing. They did a lot he did a lot of that stuff too like interacting with the, the actual grid itself and same kind of thing like you're seeing the eraser there there was a lot of yeah. you know anything could happen in a comic strip as she's walking on the ceiling mm -hmm. that sort of thing right so right yeah i kind of uh i like that stuff so i should maybe look for the old nancy but i and i thought it was a, something new added to nancy so it's not really that new um Here's a fun thing where she's taking art classes and uh, the art teacher says, you can pull your viewer's eye to the most important part of the painting using subtle changes in contrast and texture mm -hmm. and lighting. Mm -hmm. and she says, I respect my viewer's time. And so she just draws a ton of arrows. Oops, I'm not showing the right thing here. She yeah. draws a ton of arrows at the tree. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> It's a it's it's worth getting, but I guess it would be more interesting if you knew more about the history of Nancy and Slugga or Aunt mm -hmm. Fritzy. That's her name, Aunt Fritzy. Mm -hmm. Which I wonder, isn't there that character of Fritz in um Yeah, the cat. Oh, I was thinking of uh Fritz, the woman in uh um oh. Love and Rockets. <laughs> the actress with the giant breasts is named Fritz, I think. So I wonder if that's based on Aunt Fritzy. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, might might. Your mic Other muted. Terrence. My mic muted. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, I clicked oh, buttons sorry. accidentally. I was just saying it might be. Yeah, yeah. We need Earl Grey for uh, love and rockets knowledge. Oh. Yes. Um, Fritz is the one who's an actress in a lot of uh, uh, Gilbert's or Gilbert Gilberto's. Uh, comics he does that are actually movies that Fritz was in. I see. I see. Uh, it's interesting that now I guess the daily strips are in color. Mm. There's so few newspapers out there. Mm. I just don't even see newspapers anymore. Nope. And in fact, they mention somewhere that you can go read these daily online. They don't talk about ask your newspaper to run. It says Nancy can be read online at gocomics.com. Yeah. So anyway, interesting kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'll have to see if my daughter will be willing to read this, whether this will connect with her or not, with all the cell phone jokes. She may not like it. It might be too, too just sort of what everyone's already joking about. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, yeah, looks, uh, looks interesting. Looks neat. Mm -hmm. And she used to play with the very ontology of comics in the medium. So maybe I, what I really want to do is find those original ones. Mm. They mentioned somewhere in here that, that Ernie Bushmiller, I guess the original guy was pretty exciting. And then he died and a lot of different artists have taken over and it got more and more of a kind of pedestrian comic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, yeah, he was very um, adventurous with this stuff. <laughs> I think it's, I think uh, our infamous, uh, our your friend and mine, Fantagraphics, I think that they've done a big collection of uh, Nancy stuff, yeah. um, oh, you know, okay. that uh, collects a lot of the, the best. And I know there was a couple of volumes. Again, I was scouring as you were looking. I was looking around my room to see where the hell I'd put that Nancy, but God knows where <laughs> it is now. Somewhere <laughs> lost to the ages. Oh, no. As COVID was receding, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go to my library again because they get a lot of, you know, fan mm -hmm. graphics books and stuff. Yep. But now it's getting bad again. So I don't know if I'll be going to the library anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But uh, but that's a good place for me because I don't know if I want to buy an expensive book of Nancy Comics. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want to look at it. So. True. Yeah. True. Um, so we're, we're back around to the famous La Raza. Yeah, let's talk yeah, about this. Let's talk about these. Okay, so um, oh, okay. so I never read Authority, never had a chance, nor do I have it in my collections, nor I was interested, but the Glenn Fabry and the Garth Ennis, it's on this one shot. Um, and this is <laughs> the most hilarious thing I've read um, uh, so far because it gave me, it gives you a different per per perspective in this, in the way for you know what you expect from the one comic book and i was like why do i have it and i read it because of course i pro <laughs> i probably uh have read it before but i've forgotten but that's the beauty of how you start to you know you do your collection traveling you know organizing and every stuff and i saw this one um so kev this so this guy in here called kev he's the main priority in this in this one shot and so he's a mercenary killer and 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 then we're starting in in um, england typical life going on here people like sitting in the pub having a pint in those times and then we have kev sitting in the loo have uh, reading a newspaper and having a shit i guess <laughs> um so uh yeah and he is uh, minding his business and then this just dude dude come coming in and of course they are like oh you bastard you you the killer you killed and this is um they accusing him of killing the, you know the ireland northern ireland has quite an issues with this you know the people and fighting and he apparently went in there killed a bunch of them and then and and they come to basically get get him so it seems to be kev uh uh, because what who is he working for? He um, and his information came out somehow, and people found out. So that's why they they coming out. And there's this um, scene in here in the toilet, which is actually quite important part because it will continue later. Because what happens? Because of little soap, um, the guy uh, drops in him, and he managed to comprehend him, and of course kill him. And then he has these two, two dudes. Uh, lying in his in his toilet, and then he's like, "Oh, I can't even have the proper time for myself just to have this, you know, like quiet time." And he's minding his own business once again, and the, he, because he's working for special forces, there's actually a call service. Uh, you ask for the bin, uh, people uh, to come in and get uh, the bodies away, and then they say to him that you have to basically. Uh, you're gonna have a job and they're laughing because the job what kind of job he's gonna have But they didn't tell him exactly what it is. So he's sitting with his buddies and talking about everything This one of his buddies is writing a book about his experience because he's retired and they keep on asking Kev um, You know what how how you're gonna deal with what this new new job is and he goes to cemetery to meet uh, his boss and that's the lady the boss who is basically and she says while well, she's um, uh, at the grave for her daddy, she says, no one touches me like you used to be, daddy. So that, that's the never pun. You like you were like, oh, wow, okay, this is going, you know, Garth and his way of this comic book. 
Um, so basically what she does, she says to him, you have to go and kill authority. And it's like, how the hell do I do that? Oh, you need a gun. And it's like, superheroes, and he gets this measle gun, like six shot bullet gun. And like, yeah. And then he's like, what I'm going to do? But apparently he ha they have this weirdly looking uh, superpower bullets. And then the way he was getting into the apparently authority has a spaceship because it like, seems to be all superheroes had a spaceship above the earth um or like or like station actually more more like so they say the how you're gonna enter and he enters this um uh, station and then of course the 40 finds him and comprehends him and and they start laughing um at him it's like oh did this measle gonna come against our authority team you know like what are you gonna do and he gets really pissed off and he does this which that's what you get uh, when you read a cough in this book anyway um and what is i love it can i can i see that panel one more time rasa sorry yeah 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 go on oh, oh yeah wow i've never <laughs> read this this is looks phenomenal yeah yeah so um so and apparently uh, midnight character which is this guy he's very kind of like he gets like oh my god i'm gonna shoot you i'm gonna kill you and of course he still he kev got his way and shoots his head off and then because kev is kev and you know what the job is okay it's just like oh my god i'm so lucky i have done it you know like i, I actually killed superhero team and then the next picture he sees is this this alien race coming after earth and start killing everybody and there is this message going on uh it says like authority authority are you hearing us we need help of you and he just murdered them and he's like oops huh? oh man and then he's like clutching his hand and he's like what the hell i'm gonna do you know this right. is it and, th and there's this voice coming in the, in this and apparently the station the authority is living at is a sentient being because he starts talking to him and then he, he basically gives him shit like oh what the hell why did you do this and it's like what it was part of my job and it's like and he's like oh my god and there's these people dying on earth uh, and so like proper, it's like, oh my God, I fucked it up. So, and then there is this uh, scene coming here uh, of, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm purposely trying not to show it to you because there's this good scene. Anyway, so she's, he's, he's I'm going to show it to you. His uh, boss is basically on the screen having a laugh, like, ha ha ha, this is me. This is the alien is actually who is um, attacking the earth and they employed him. So not actual his boss, but alien race employed Kev. And he's like, oh shit, this is it, you know? <laughs> and then message terminated, have a nice day. And then the sentient uh, stations keep on talking to him. And it's like, apparently she has a solution for him. And then because he, she's basically dissing the, dissing the earth people, like, or generally humanity. It's like, oh, we're not worth it, you know, like, uh, you know, like comparing to you uh, and uh, like to hum humans, look who you are. And you're like a douchebag, basically, at the end of the day. But then, he somehow tries to convince the thing and they what the, he does he she to reverse the time and the 40 comes back to life and then <laughs> uh and then oh, because authorities authority they do the job they start killing those aliens everything is sorted and the best part of this comic book was is uh is you know like everything's happening everything is good um and then uh, they basically start to give him like so you know I, I don't remember what's happened you know who are you anyway so they basically uh, after doing all this job they come back to the station and it's like who are you kev and he's like just standing there oh i'm just about to leave and it's like you know there's something really off for a second i thought something happened and then the the the, the station uh station station shows them what's happened to them before and then oh so they go after him and they're gonna kill you the midnight guy was like oh i'm gonna about to murder you gonna be done and then somehow kev you know like oh i'm he's now trying to save himself tries to talk to to them saying no 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 but look you are here you saved everything everything is fine just let me go and then of course <laughs> he convinced them but then he says to them um why because there's captain midnight and this guy and as you know, I don't know if you guys know, but they are, well, he, Midnight especially, he is gay. Mm. And then he said, Kev says, why, what are they, a couple of poof or something? And 
and what because of he said they basically punched the shit out of Kev and they say wanker get well soon tasty bints <laughs> yeah so the, and this is as I say and the funny thing is I was talking about so while he's in the hospital lying all crippled and stuff the dudes are still coming after him with um, machine guns doing talking about the same hand and the pun is of a story you have this soap so you know what happened in the beginning so basically ah, absolutely fantastic. fantastic little issue um one of That's the as I say, issue. yeah and it's it's just basically kind of gives you a little bit of your authority characters and all those heroes in a way because they give you right. all the personality because i really didn't tell you exactly what they said word by word but yeah, yeah, as yeah. this is goth and is the beauty full of goth and it can do you know like a little single issue where it tells you the whole story and it's such it's gives you laugh it's it's an entertaining and glenn fabry this is glenn fabry's yeah. art inside Great which i'll show you art. next yeah. next book i will talk about and i'll show you too because i had the kick of glenn fabry and i have something else i have not read and so this one is glenn fabry from about 2002 and i'll show you what happens to glenn fabry he's very famous for the art covers because he's fantastic he is one of the best yeah cover artist uh who's alive but when right, he, in right. 2006 what he does which i showed you the book i was reading i will i was reading next you'll know what's the difference i'll show you in comparison it's actually quite different four years what happens when you do comic books so yeah right when you develop that. highly recommend highly recommend this one issue cheap definitely can find it in the bin probably somewhere in bin boxes so yeah right. kev fantastic nice Such that a, looks really good yes and i could not stop laughing it's like oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> a typical bastard <laughs> a <Yeah>. douche <laughs> doing his job but he's really good at his, what he does you know he kills really well you know like right. and he has this middle gun it's like start shooting with his bullets and so the, <laughs> the brain explodes and even himself like what the what do i have in here you know like he didn't realize so yeah very good one of the best single issues i've, I've read so far on of golf and it's in particular so yeah damon you're, yeah, you're muted damon you're muted yet yeah i was trying to say it makes me feel like um they were much more daring with superhero comics maybe 20 years ago than they are now they're a little more conservative they won't go off mm -hmm. <laughs> go off the territory so crazily back now that they would then. Yeah, well, and I think there's also just a lack of those writers willing to push those boundaries because when she was talking about that, the one thing that I loved about Alan, well, one of the million things I loved about Alan Moore's Swamp Thing is when they introduced the superheroes, the idea of them being so far removed from anything in reality going on there out in space, um, you know, so Swamp Thing kind of takes over that idea. And especially with those kind of creators at the helm, kind of tackling superheroes and, you know, poking holes in them and stuff. I just don't feel like there's those kind of irreverent kind of writers and creators out there. I mean, maybe a Grant Morrison and a Burnham, they're going to take, you know, because even Burnham's yeah. art yeah. is has kind of that with it when he did the, the Batman stuff with uh, Grant Morrison there. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like there's an abundance of writers willing to tackle them in that kind of way, you know. But do they reel, do the editors reel in these kind of writers now? Because Enos and Ellis have both recently done Batman, but there was nothing very right. radical there. Right. Oh, right. by the way, it's a Wildstorm print, but it's an imprint of DC. So right. Wildstorm. Wild, Wildstorm was um, Jim Lee's imprint yeah. at Image, yeah. and then he sold it to DC. Yeah. Which uh, did not make Alan more happy. Yeah. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's as I say. Oh, yeah, that the double page I was showing to you guys. That's the beauty of Glenn Fabris. It's just yeah, it's tech. amazing. It's, yeah, it's really you know, nice. Quite, yeah, and then I'll show you. So as I say, I'll I'll show you next one. Vertigo, <laughs> comic crack, a Vertigo book. Yay! Well, another thing in modern superhero comics is the artists who are that good usually don't do interiors at all anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he, I was surprised. Covers. The, because I only know Glenn Fabry from his cover art, but in this book, I was surprised to have his art, but then I have another book to show you to you who he has done nine issues for Vertigo line. And it's amazing. He actually, I think in my eyes, when I was reading, he improved immensely. 
to what I mean, maybe the you're all about the inker because um, I'm not sure if, if what, what who is the inker in here because I didn't really. Oh wait, it says just Glenn Fabry himself, and uh, John Lehman. Could you believe was editor of this one? Um, oh, and Wildstorm. Uh, the Lehman is famous for what is he famous for? Um, Chew, Chew, Chew. Yeah. I think so anyway so yeah so very good as i say i'll show you that uh glenn fabry uh of a book when i'm it's my turn so so people were talking about titan publishing Dru julier or however you pronounce that yeah. name and yeah uh, books were by wildstorm slash dc mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, earlier in the chat people were talking about titan books and they are one of the few people who are reprinting European comics. And it might be that Titan doesn't have a deep enough reach into the mainstream American bookstore market. I don't know. Yeah. Titan is prominent in here in UK for sure. Right. They're a UK Easy. company with a US yeah. branch. So yeah. they may not. Right. Uh, it feels like a bigger publisher needs to grab a hold of these and push them towards the uh, book market, but uh, the European ones, maybe that. Uh, <clears throat> if I'm, I'm right, I think I'm following Glenn Fabry on Instagram. He's doing something on Kickstarter, as far as I remember. Okay. And he's aging and you can see his, I mean, this is was his heydays. No wonder you were talking right. about a lot. But I think, you know, like if you are a fan of Glenn Fabry, you probably would be still to this day. You know, he has this, that, you know, that's the, the, the way he does the stuff, you know, you recognize this all the time anyway, no matter the age and stuff like that. So, yeah, but I'll show you that one, which I was really excited about because there's one famous name attached to this comic book I'm going to talk next, but it's not the person who actually writes it. What it is. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, then, <laughs> no, it's Terrence's oh. turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, for a no, second, it's like, no, I need to go talk to you about I'm in this suspense. one. So this is the this is the one I was talking about, Damien. So it was published ah. by Kitchen Sink. They did a series of these old Nancy mm. ones, oh, nice. um, and not not much else to say. I'll just show you the the one that I mean, out of the many that stand out, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about, like playing with the panels, you know, looking mm -hmm. for somewhere to hang a jacket and using the top of the the border. So, yeah, I mean, the, this is oh yeah, that's fine. classic. I think I've seen that one reprinted elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so they're they're great collections, well worth it, and just like thin, soft covers, uh, yeah. you know. But uh, so I can probably whatever. find that for not too much money. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. cool. So this will be a short one because the last stuff that I have to talk about, I mean, beyond this, uh, you know, just this has always been really good. There's not much else to say, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I really like the new series. That, that's the um, Ram V Swamp thing. So it still exactly, continues to be yeah. well, and the story is. It's up to what you like. I'm digging it. Yeah, I think it's really fun. And like I said before, I think the thing that impresses me the most about it is that this feels like he has a story to tell. It's not just writing a Swamp Thing story and just going to kind of tap into things that happened previously. And, you know, right. he's really writing mm. his own story with the character. There's a new guy that's the, the, that the, that's the Swamp Thing. You know what I mean? So, you know. Um, that's cool. This might have been out of the six issues. This one might have been on the lower end for me. But uh -huh. that said, I still really enjoy it. You know what I mean? Even a slight misstep just for me is still a great series because the rest of the issues, I think, have been really solid. So, um, hello. <laughs> <Hi>. Surprise. <laughs> Um, so there's not hey, much hey, else hey, for me hey. to talk about because honestly, the other, the last couple of things that I did read, I mm -hmm. didn't really like, and I kind oh. of disliked one or two of them a lot. So I don't want to say too much about them, but we will oh. talk just very briefly about um, Superman Red and Blue. Has oh. Lillian grown a few inches, or she's yeah. grown? Yeah, she's she a looks, giant. She looks gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for a bike ride with mom. Okay, you go for a bike ride. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to a park. Um, nice. The Splash Park near Skill Coffee. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah just saying. Nice. Cool. Okay. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. Oh. Um, so oh, the other, so in this new issue, it's, um, there's your creators on the back. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is the only reason I picked this book up because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to pick this series up anymore. And I wanted to read his story. And, you know, 
at the end of the day, I'm a big softy. And uh, this this story got me right at a time. This is such a good story. And it is such a simple story, just a father and son and their relationship. And just this idea that, um, you know, uh, his father is kind of having, you know, difficulty with Clark and like coming to terms of what kind of he has in front of him. So he goes to see a priest and the priest just gives him some kind of just positive you know, just tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much, how proud and how special he is. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> See you later. <laughs> um, and uh, that's kind of the rest of the story is uh, he just takes all of these moments to tell uh, Clark that you are special. Um, I love you. I'm proud of you. You are special. I love you. I'm proud of you. And that's every single panel until we see Clark as Superman. Um, it's making me teary just thinking about it. Uh, we see Clark as Superman and he's saying the same thing to everybody around him. Just that you're special. I love you. And all of this, like such an absolutely touching story. Like, and I think it, more of an impact because of Daniel Warren Johnson, the stuff that he's done up to this point, as phenomenal as it's been, this definitely has a different kind of tone and just to have this kind of touching you know element to it i think was even more impactful than if somebody who maybe writes a lot like this you know what i mean because it wasn't it wasn't totally outside of his box or anything but mm -hmm. this is the way that this kind of hero i think like a superman it, i think that this is where this kind of character shines in these type of stories not making him dark making him this kind of positive influence wanting to do these good things like unbelievable story and exactly, so i read yeah. that one first and then i went backwards and read the rest of the issue and uh the rest of the issue was a stinker so that's that's the only <laughs> reason to buy it um the rest of it i mean you know whatever it was just whatever um beautiful mm. art in some of it the art is gorgeous but they just the stories just didn't do anything for me and i was just kind of reminded um why i don't pick this book up anymore you know um mm -hmm that just as well sad. as this one uh you know i tried it again just because i thought i'd give it a second chance and i still I didn't like more. it so i won't be buying it anymore and again the art in this is beautiful as well too but the stories just totally fall flat for me that just does absolutely nothing for me so um yeah pick up the superman for the daniel warren johnson even though i've pretty much shown you every single page it's really really nice really <laughs> nice story very touching mm. Especially if you're a soft touch like me. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff I'm going to wait for the dollar bins, I guess. Yeah. Given all your reviews of them. There was one issue you yeah. liked a lot, right? Uh, of the Superman one, I feel like I really enjoyed the first one. I think that was the one that I really liked. What number are they up to now? They're up to number five. Yeah, maybe it I was the like first I feel like it was one. the first issue that I really enjoyed. Yeah. I remember you recommending it and then taking your recommendation back the next day. Yeah, issue. absolutely. <laughs> exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't it Batman you like the most? Batman, Batman Black, and, Black and, White. and White is fantastic. Yeah, there's there's been a lot more hits in that than misses. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the new issue today and I didn't pick it up because I think I have it on my pull list at my other shop. So I didn't want to double buy it. But that one's a lot of fun. Yeah. They have a Red Sonya Black, Black and White and Red. And yeah, I wanted to try right. that, but I, I never saw it at the shop. I grabbed Was it that any good? Um, and I enjoyed it. Same kind of thing. Like I thought this, you know, again, it's this, you know, it's this it's gimmick artists, that everybody seems probably. to be trying out because there's a, a Deadpool one as well, too. Same right. thing. I think it's black, white, and red as well, too. But the exactly. Red Sonya one was pretty fun. The art was beautiful. Nice. I have to dig that one up. Yeah. Well, of the things I've read so far this week, I think Not All Robots is one of the more inter most interesting ones. It's another oh, the... Mark yeah. Russell comic. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it in the end of the month. He's still, he's still my favorite thing he's done was um, the Flintstones. Uh -huh. But he has done a bunch of other interesting things like Billionaire Island and whatnot. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um so the irony is because I was going to two different comic shops and I thought and I thought I didn't have it because I saw mm -hmm. this cover and I really liked it. I said, oh, I thought I put this on my pull list, but I didn't get this. Mm -hmm. So I bought this at the other comic shop. And then I discovered in my other pile, I had the other cover. 
Yeah, that's the cover I was. So even at. after all these years of having a pull list and stuff, I get fooled sometimes by these variant covers. Mm -hmm. So the the set, I, I think I like this cover better. The uh, yeah. tribute color to Whist uh, not Whistler's mother. Uh, what do you call it? American something. Mm -hmm. um, the setup is uh, robots and humans live together, and the robots do all the work. And the robots have built these domes that protect humans from glow all the hideous effects of global warming and other things, pollution and war. And so everything is framed by this talk show where they're talking about have robots replaced humans and, and uh, do we still need humans and stuff? And uh, it's, it's all very funny and poignant and kind of sad at the same time. This, and so I guess each human family has a robot who lives with them and then goes out to work and earns the living and every the humans just stay home and wait for the robot to come home and uh, mm -hmm. we focus on this family where the the robot when he comes home doesn't want to interact with the family they try but he's just in a bad mood after work and and eventually we sort of get the robot's point of view too where he's talking with other robots about um you know how he'd like to turn off his empathy chip and stuff like that uh, so I really enjoyed this comic. You might see the flaw is visually it's not comedic art at all. Yeah. And maybe they thought it would be clever to combine. It's it's Mike Diodato artwork. Mm -hmm. And he always now, whenever he's drawing, he does these grids going off all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a very sort of unemotional illustrative style that I thought worked really well on that uh, post-apocalyptic Western that I just read by him. Mm -hmm. But here it just seems just so dry. I want to see a little more comedic art, especially with the robots or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people don't have a whole lot of expressions on their faces. Mm -hmm. Here's Redem an ad for Redemption, the one where I did like his art a lot. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then in the back matter, actually, Diodato has a note uh, where he... It's interesting that these AWDA things have little essays by the creators, at least in the first issue. Mm -hmm. um, he's... Where did that go? Uh, anyway, he says, the, oh, that he uh, read the script and he wasn't sure if it would fit his style, but Axel Alonso told him, you're... Um, you're f fucking Mike Diodato, you can draw anything. But I think he was wrong. <laughs> I think this would have been a lot better with, with some other artist. Uh -huh. uh, maybe the guy who did the Flintstones or something. Yeah. Um, Steve Pugh. Steve, Steve Pugh, Pugh, yeah. Steve Pugh does, is like the perfect collaborator. Yeah. Um, so we, because we don't, you know, there's some point, Steve Pugh also could get the poignancy Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Russell kind of combines that black humor with the poignant humanity, often of non-human creatures like the animals in, in Flintstones and other creatures in other books. Um, but I really enjoyed this a lot, and I, I'll definitely stick with it. But then the other interesting thing to me was in Mark Russell's essay about it, he mm -hmm. said the inspiration was the Me Too movement and this man, male centric movement that responded to the me too pro movement called not all men where i mm -hmm. guess some men came out and said you know it's not us you know don't blame us for what all men do or what other men do um mm -hmm. and uh mark russell has a really negative response to that and i don't know anything about the not all men movement so i have no idea what they say mm -hmm. but as that's what these robots are these robots are the men who don't take responsibility for what all men do. Cause there is one line in here where they say, well, where the robots say, well, even if every once in a while a robot goes psycho and kills its humans, it's still worth it for all the stuff we do for you. But it just, that claim that this is all a metaphor for the whole me too movement with these robots and ecological disaster and stuff. I, I wish I hadn't read that essay because in a way it's sort of, it, it deflated all the layers of this down to one thing. Mm -hmm. um, that just kind of goes to show you sometimes the creator doesn't really know everything he has created. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I think it's interesting. I felt like it as much as 
I didn't even get anything male versus female out of it, but uh, I got kind of man and technology and people's jobs being replaced and the question of whether humanity is even a good thing on the planet Earth. Maybe we are the scourge of planet Earth. Um, and also the kind of classes like, um, <clears throat> you know, right now, say in a place like Portland, there's all these really successful people with their high tech jobs. And then they have to hire these people uh, to fix things around the house and, and build their solar panels and stuff who perhaps have a whole different lifestyle and a whole different uh, political view and everything. So I just sort of saw all these different layers of satire and all these different parts of our society. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Um, despite him thinking, or maybe he likes the idea of a hook that makes it more like easy to tell how politically correct he is. But despite that, I feel like um, he'll probably explore all kinds of different issues. Yeah. Um, so I hope I hope that it's not just about the Beatty movement. Hmm. I'm gonna have a read. Uh, as I say, I'm gonna get it at the end of the month, so I'll have a look. What I yeah, I'd my, love to hear what you think about it. Yeah, because um, I kind of like I, I want my crystal something like you I say. I have to give same. you my extra copy. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I already ordered mine, so I guess it's gonna come through mine. But uh, yeah, I was curious because of uh, you know, like all the creative team is quite uh, interesting because Mark Russell as well something I feel like I want his writing, you know, like because I I enjoyed whatever I've re read so far mm -hmm. with him. Not many new yeah. yet, so this is one of the newest things since I read yeah. something from him. So I want and to I try. Think he has a book coming out from Vault Comics too. So he keeps spreading out. He was working yeah. with Dynamite on Red Sonja, but now he's doing more original stuff like at Ahoy yeah. and now at AWA and uh, at uh, oh, at uh, Vault. Yeah, no. He's still definitely, you know, even though I have some issues with him, he's definitely one of my favorite writers. Um, yeah. See, that's the thing. His stories aren't, but Ragamuffin saying here, Mark Russell seems to love the on the nose type stories. His stories aren't as on the nose as he yeah. thinks they are or something. They're more <laughs> subtle than he seems to think they are. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it kind of looks like art that a robot could do. And I could see the editors might thought it was be interesting to combine this very straight laced illustration with this dark satire satirist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Diodato is a very talented artist, but yeah. and some people are huge Diodato uh, fans. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's definitely a comic worth checking out in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to reading it because I was like curious because robots and humanity sometimes always kind of intrigues me to see because robots yeah. usually go evil and stuff like that. But maybe humans can go evil and you never know. Let's see right. what's going to come up. I even thought of Magnus Robot Hunter here. <laughs> where the robots <laughs> of the place yeah, exactly. But I'm dying okay. to know what your next book is. Wow. <laughs> Did I build up maybe too much and then bullshit? What are you talking about? Eh? <laughs> yeah, you gotta, now you got to live up to the hype. <laughs> so as you guys knew, like I've been doing, getting into this uh, Neil Gaiman Sandman. So I was because I was doing all these things and I saw that I see this, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, this name, Neil Gaiman, never, never wear. It's like, what is this? It's a Vertigo title, Glenn Fabry, but the writer is Mike Carey. Oh, who's a good writer. But Neverwhere was a novel first by... Yes, uh, exactly. So, um, unfortunately, well, it's a nine-issue series. Um, so, and um, I read them all because the, the story went really crazy. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have issue one and four. But, you know, like you have internet. So, thankfully to that, I went uh, digital route. So, the story, uh, the first issue starts with this running scene and it's funny because i'll show you the digital and i will show you the comic book so digital really enhances the the, the brightness mm -hmm. a lot you can see i'll show you the example of issue of an issue so we have a scene with this girl running around running in sewage is running away from this dude who's trying to kill her and uh he um uh, is almost chasing her around and then suddenly she she puts her hand into his chest and you're like, oh my God. And he's basically dying because what, what the girl is, um, 
the she is uh, her name is um well the door that's how we call her so her powers is her family powers is that she is able to open any door to anything like heaven hell you know and then this all scene starts in with this dude who is narrating the story and <laughs> another dude we have to follow um and he's miserable his life is not really great um he, because you know he's doing his mundane things he's in the office has this lovely girlfriend who basically belittles him you know she's she's she decides what her life is she's kind of like he's a non-decisive guy he does the job whatever people suggested him he usually does um so we basically uh, have this girl with this uh crazy different um and like clothing and i was like what is going on here we have like uh, new days and old days um so we're following him and then suddenly uh she basically while high like running away from these people who's trying to catch her um she plops on uh on the pavement next to him while he's walking this girlfriend and he's like look the girl lying can she's hurt and the girlfriend's oh she's probably she's like a uh, you know homeless just give her for all money at her and she will be fine and let's go just mind your business which is what really happens in london to be honest and everything is happening in london um and it's like typically because i've lived in london for eight years it's kind of mm -hmm. feels like i almost the same to me <laughs> because it used to be like you know you stay away from people you don't talk to people in the tubes you just mind your business just run 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 do your business make the money you know like that's the only thing mm -hmm. you kind of experience in london most of the times so of course nightlife is a different story Anyway, so she's almost dying, and then he couldn't just um, go away from her, and he's starting to help her. And that's where, basically, really the story happens uh, because of this. And apparently, there's this... Um, he w uh, he wakes up after she's supposed to be sleeping, and there's, there's, there's pigeons everywhere. And he's like, why are you doing this with pigeons? What happens to the pigeons? Why are they everywhere here? And she's like, oh, no, I just need to send a message. And he's like, eh? And then she has this... Um, kind of a keyhole sign on her eye. So that's why her name is Dor and her family is all about that, their powers. Right. So the series is basically like, it felt like um, like a big dream it felt at the beginning, but it just went from wild point to another wild point. And I'm now showing you the actual comic book, which is actually much more. And that's the house she was brought up into. So the house doesn't have no windows, no doors. But the ability, because of what they have, they can put it, um, any picture and they can open it to to whatever they feel like having. Um, and um, there's a lot of characters in here, which I absolutely love. They, this guy, um, what, is, what, what do they call him? I forgot this. Oh, yeah. The Carabas. So he is the guy who's going to basically, she's the sending the message to him to help him. So... It's based in London, but there is the, the the story of this one is that there's London and there's underneath London, so the sewage line and everything, and um, and because of underneath London, there is these characters who dressed like kind of period era and stuff like that, and um, what what he doesn't know while they he's following them to do some of the bidding for the girl, the door girl, um, something happens to our main character. And the story just goes from, as I say, like from crazy to crazy. And it just it doesn't let let in, like it's really entertaining. And the more I was reading, the more entertaining it felt. So this is Glenn Fabry in 2006 now. That's his whole uh, John comic book. And I don't know if you can notice, but I did really notice the difference. It's more confidence in the eyes. So maybe it has, maybe his inking has improved. It's less catchy mm -hmm. because he is more like a, famous for these covers which is painted covers right. so i think it's getting back to inking is quite different you know you have to still get an act of it and i felt this is really one of the best comic glenn fabry has done for me in art wise mm -hmm. so i really enjoyed it um and yeah uh ragged muffin yeah she does like kind of i think maybe that's what they got impression because jessica cruz has this weird eye thing uh in the dc comic books as well maybe they grabbed it from here yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> um so that's her dad and basically the whole story we found out with uh, that door's family because of the powers they get killed and the whole the whole mission is for her to find who actually murdered them um 
So yeah, and oh, you have the advertisement, which uh, that's what I want to talk about about advertisement. You know, those in all the comic books, like in two thousand six and stuff like that. Maybe Vertigo line I really like, enjoy all the ads. Mm -hmm. It just makes me want to go in and just discover more things. Find like, all those Vertigo books. Yeah, uh, Hundred Bullets, which is Brian Azarello stuff. Anyway, so I really enjoy this. It's as it's a bit of a crazy ride. They go through this. Um, motions and motion and stuff and my carry he, he was talking uh, in the there's a words in the graphic novel where he was really thinking how um difficult it would be to write some things like neil gaiman's book but there's other covers all this other characters this guy is mm -hmm. earl of earl score so there's all underground stations uh we have and all of them apparently are earls and underneath london which is was very entertaining because I, as I lived in London, I knew exactly who places they were talking about, and I've been them because I I dr driven through London everywhere to be honest. So, and this is another one. And the, the story, the way the story ends, we have this slain monster, and who killed it was very surprising, and says conclusion in issue nine. Um, it was surprising ending to me uh, because I was thinking the guy was to, uh, showing you before the no face and just eyes in that period clothing i thought he's the bad guy but it he wasn't so mrs was very um i at first i wasn't uh, sure where they were trying to go with the storyline but i thoroughly enjoyed it and i think you know like i know why mike carey and uh writing duty sees and, and written apparently a lot of people are talking about it as well it's really good but i i really enjoyed it and i'm glad i you know i finally after right like getting those those issues i i read it and having this Glenn Fabry comic book uh, in itself drawn, it's something for me because I'm a fan of his. So really enjoyed it and showed it, uh, like yeah, showed it to you guys. Amazing interior art. Yeah. yeah it so looks it's very, every, honestly, I'm just showing a couple because there's like nine issues I'm showing to you. I will take a while, yeah. but highly, if you want to kind of explore more, I think it's worth it. I mean, at the beginning, it's quite, maybe it would say a bit slow to start the storyline, mm -hmm. but all the, the char our main character, which I forgot his name now, um, but he is basically <laughs> perseveres and he goes through, uh, you know, like he was so in like an in undecisive, never, ha you know, like not knowing what to do, but this is um, really good. I think is the way it's written and my carry was, as I say, Neil Gaiman is a name you don't want to really write. From his stuff, you know, like because he done the novel, there was then the TV show apparently, which I didn't know existed in that time because I wasn't aware. Um, but yeah, uh, this nine issues and the vertical books, uh, it just have those advertisements where it makes me want to go through some of this 2006 era of, of vertical was amazing. Like even the authority is actually quite entertaining looking to me because of the creative team. You know, when Oliver on Arts, which I'm kind of familiar of. Oh, and another, and another one. Have you guys read Gil Gilbert Hernandez' The Sloth comic? Yes, I like that one a lot. Yeah? Was okay, that Vertigo? Cool. Yeah, it is Vertigo. It's, it's about a guy in a band, I think, who gets into a coma, and when he wakes up, he wants to do the music much slower, and generally <laughs> he's more sloth-like after his coma. Oh, uh, there you go. I'll show you the... the that's the comic or the graphic novel, actually, of the Gerbel and Anglitz from Vertigo. So this is how you discover new things. You know, you read something yeah. else, and then we frown upon those ads. But honestly, later on in life, when you want to discover your new comic books, I guess <laughs> ads is a thing. You know, yeah. like there's another one um, uh, comic book which I uh, let's see if I have. I'm be, gonna be able to show to you, or maybe not. Hey, <laughs> why are you not showing to me? Search. What did I search for? Anyway, there's a couple of things I discovered on this vertical because I was reading this book. The, mm -hmm. There's a couple of things which um, I didn't. I can't even get it. Like there's another one. Oh, Bite Club, uh, which is a number five issue storyline, and it's I forgot who is it by, but it's uh, something I wouldn't I wouldn't mind reading as well. So there's some vertical things, you know, you start reading vertical books and those advertisements is just like, oh, I haven't read this. This is entertaining. I want to read more. Maybe I'll to find it. But yeah, very good thing when you start to 
go through your comic book collection and discover all the stuff you forgot why you bought it and then you read it and you're like oh okay exactly that's why <laughs> it's just like this crazy dream it almost felt like i was dreaming to be honest i actually almost fall i actually fallen asleep while i was reading so i guess because i was i always get tired when i read for a longer period of time so i get a, like 15 minutes nap to wake me up and i read again so this is how i go through sometimes when i have a break and have time to read it so so yeah very good that's very cool and i yeah. you know Fantastic. i never heard of that particular title yeah um, mm -hmm. other than knowing that that the novel existed yeah and then so, the way he, the way they were describing uh the neil gaiman in time the young neil gaiman before his <laughs> fandom from sandman and apparently sandman was everybody knows no right. sandman and some beauty people who you know not in the comic book um I guess business they weren't aware of sandman and the fam fame the neil main gate got so it was funny how they were describing neil gaiman and knowing now in the future <laughs> what neil gaiman <laughs> is whoops you know don't talk right. to him like now he's a beast of the writer you know yeah vertigo i, I would say the books that might have been vertigo books are now scattered across numerous other publishers so it's mm. harder there's not like a central place to go yeah yeah there's not an imprint to go to and kind of follow along yeah, with the accent yeah. yeah but it, one thing i'll tell you about this vertical line is just like every single thing i i i read or especially those mini stuff like those nine issue series or five or four issues it's always grabs me it's always it's never been like really too much of disappointment it's always they always had those creators who were it's just not afraid to just do whatever they felt like in that line and they were allowed right. to do so. Like we were yeah. talking about like authority in that Garth Ennis book, you know, like Grand Fabry is doing uh, comic interiors. We don't, you don't see that anymore, you know, like that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely fantastic to discover. And not as funny as that mm -hmm. Kev was, but uh, this, uh, <laughs> it's just crazy dream, you know, with imaginations and the clever of writing, even though he's using the material been done before and it's difficult to put novel part into the comic book part and still keep you entertained which i have not read novel nor i tend not to right, because i'm more into comic books anyway reading but this has just felt seamless to be honest it went the dialogue was really good and entertaining the characters and those under the london part was the most entertaining thing to look at it's just like crazy you know like you take an i don't know you take some drugs and you just go trippy and start dreaming something like that because you honestly i don't know how you would imagine that kind of things and beasts slay the beast and there's some some um i guess it's from neil gaiman's there's some because he's been i think he's living in london as far as i'm aware but he loves i, I remember seeing some of his, his interviews he loves london particularly because of the yeah. variety of cracks and nookies you can go through and you you discover different parts of london where you're like oh you shouldn't go there at night time <laughs> like myself i used to travel like five o'clock in the morning in london city center Oof, the characters you see on the streets eh, not something you should do to be honest by yourself because then you should be afraid <laughs> yeah so yeah it's just it, it was kind of thing it's just um remind me of my life in there um as well as you know like snippets of information all those uh, station names just i remember i just could picture the the station and then suddenly underground and there's this earl of gray <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just doing that and yeah really good really enjoyed it very cool well i'm glad mm, you yeah, shared absolutely. that with us mm. do you have anything else terence nah nothing that i have nice things yeah. to say about so uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> I have just a few things that I want to just quickly mention. Um, mm -hmm. The Me You Love in the Dark, the new Scotty Young script oh, yeah. art by mm -hmm. uh, Jorge Corona. Apparently uh, sold out it, already. Oh, really? It's a yeah. cool comic, but I don't know if it has as much a commercial appeal. It's about an artist who has writer's block in a house. Oh, with ghosts, or not writer's block, ghost uh, artist block. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it, but it, it basically has one character so far, plus her agent. I guess. So oh. we'll see where it goes. Um, I can't imagine it getting as big of an audience with that subject matter, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I, but I, I recommend it. I liked it. Mm -hmm. The Nice House on the Lake, 
Mm -hmm. This is issue three. And I'm 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 still enjoying it, but I'm hitting the point where I really can't keep track of the characters. So I feel <laughs> nice. like this yeah. may be better as a trade read. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that yeah. issue so much. Oh, okay. I yeah. was struggling. I, I was struggling so much that I got a bit distracted. <laughs> like in mm -hmm. here, this character looks very handsome, but I think he's the same character who's all messed up with glasses. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not same sure. One, yeah, exactly. So I was like. Is that him? Is that not him? Wait, yeah. it's him. No, it's not him. Oh, so I got distracted. Yeah, a lot. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's definitely uh, a really great book. But I, I need yeah. to figure out figure it out a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, six six sidekicks continues oh, yeah. to be really fun. Oh, is uh, it? Can, I continue really funny. Uh, good characterization. They add in a female character this issue, Ooh, who funny. I love. The, the best character now is the female character. But the coloring is so monotone that I, uh -huh. since it's supposed to be funny, I just wish there were more splashes of fun color throughout. But uh -huh. that, really liking it. And then Grendel, Ooh. Devil's Odyssey just wrapped up. And Oosh. it was a waste of time. Oh, Basically, wow. Basically, everything that happened was pointless in the end. Mm -hmm. And he's back on Earth, and we're going to have more adventures. I'll probably keep getting the rest. But I have to say... I, I had it's one of those things, I guess, where I enjoyed the journey, except for one issue. Um, but at the end of the day, there was no no end point of value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like in terms of plot, you might as well have not have taken that journey. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it'll pay off someday, uh, you know, five or six volumes of Grendel from now. But I, I even doubt that. So Matt Wagner so, still did it, yes? Is he's... Matt Wagner even did the art, because for a while he was letting other people do the art, but he wrote mm -hmm. and, and drew it, and his son colored it. Wow, um, okay. The Family issue business. I didn't like, number seven, previously, he was mo reaching this climax, and he had to fight a big bad guy. The bad guy was Donald Trump in every way. Oh. And it just threw me out of the book. You know, we've been going from planet yep. to planet to planet, and now he's having this climactic battle and the bad guy's this humorous version of Donald Trump. I mean, I understand yeah. making fun of Donald Trump, but it didn't fit for him. Yeah, just leave that orange face alone and just <laughs> yeah. shove it in the, somewhere else and let us forget about it, right. I'd say. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much what I've read so far. I have a whole lot more, because of my trip, I have a, lot, a whole lot more new comics to read, and I hope yeah. to do a countdown video at some point, but I don't know we'll how I'm going to get through up. them all. Yeah. Anything more from you, Rasa? No, just showing you my innovation of how to put my stickers on my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that on my uh, comic books, the, the, the shelves, because I, I tend to forget uh -huh. what it's on top of it. So I used oh, to have those... do them all as word balloons. Yeah, and uh, I used to do that like in here, like the, the paper, but my my kid is, knows how to take them out and throw them away. I don't know what, exactly what's in those boxes again. So I was like, I'm going to try with stickers, but it's very good to peeling the stickers. But, you know, I can put those stickers back kind of thing. So, yeah, and then it's, it's like I like the – because I have this machine here uh, where you can actually do – cut out the stickers and actually draws for you. Yeah. So, ooh, nice. I'm so fancy. Very I'm so fancy. Cool. If you need any – any like graphics professional. If you guys need some word balloons, let me know. I can make it for you. So it's a die Just cut uh, little machine, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, huh, that's pretty yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. It Great actually idea. even can draw your own. I can actually draw my own art, line out it, line it out, and I think he can even draw that for me. But I don't know. I haven't tried that. Huh. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Burger um, Books has kind of... not lived up to Vertigo, I would say. Yeah. Right. And um, just um, but, ragamuffin talking there. Do you think the current comic fan would want a new Vertigo? I mean, you know, it's it's hard to get that perspective on things. I certainly think that it would come as a welcome kind of addition to the world, but yeah. that's just me. I mean, who knows what? There must be a reason why they folded it beyond just right. you know. I mean, the, the sales must have started plummeting, so maybe that's not the case um, because of or that. Especially because of the market being so there's also right now. corporate desire to have more copyright control over things yeah right exactly right and and then control over the what material you can actually write and what can you publish mm -hmm. that's a killer mm -hmm. because i don't think that vertigo will be continuously to what it was in that time if somebody would say oh you can't write that or you can't do that so you would never get those books we are 
raving about in right. vertical line. I'm one fighting to be. for you on that side of things. And I think she probably really fought for the creators, especially early on to, mm -hmm. you need to have a strong voice within the office to kind of push some of these things through. And, you know, if you don't have that mm -hmm. strong voice, you're not going to get anything through. No. Yeah, I kind of thought Dan DiDio might have wanted to push her out because he likes to be the strong voice or something. Right. right. That's just well, guessing. And what it could he be all Jim Lee's doesn't... fault, I tend to believe. And what DiDio is doing now these days? Ah, uh, he's just enjoying retirement, I guess. Uh, exactly. Well, where do yeah, I go? I don't know. That's a good question if he'll pop up again. Mm -hmm. I actually like Dan DiDio as a um, superhero guy, but I, I don't know if he appreciated it for a guy. Mm. Um, I feel like Burger Books did have a few good ones. The one, the main one I can think of is the one but that Anne Nocenti did, mm -hmm. but they never finished publishing it in individual issues and then just went straight to a trade. Oh, wow. Um, and that had really good David Aha art. Oh, um, yeah. So I haven't finished reading it because of that. I was a little mm -hmm. pissed that they didn't, because I was buying the individual issues. Oh, talking there were about some the other good ones, but... Yeah. Talking about David Aha and the Hawkeye, you know, the TV series of Disney, mm -hmm. the comic book exploding now. It, well, it hasn't come oh, out yet, but yeah. yeah, you want to make I money. Sold that way too early. I should have held to on to that series. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, uh, wait before, just before the TV show comes out, you should sell, put it on sale because that's where the money is. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> because apparently they're going to use the same kind of style of uh, writing on that one, specifically on that co new comic book by Matt Fraction, isn't it? Who is who written that one? Which I've never, but David Haha's art was just fantastic. I think that's what yeah. first appearance of Pizza Dog is, isn't it? I think. <laughs> Pizza Dog, yes. Yeah. Worth yeah, so yeah. yeah. I love that issue, but I <laughs> just laugh when I say first appearance. Yeah, I, I well, enjoyed that's the series when it was coming out. I was really yeah. digging it. Yeah, I think Hawkeye has always been kind of like that kind of, like in Avengers, he used to be the guy, annoying guy, you know, like he, everybody yeah, hated yeah. him because he had those those clever right. lines. They were always, oh, I'm just jo joking, that kind of guy, you know, like he'd say something and oh, I'm just joking, nobody could understand you. Oh, That's the Peter Milligan yeah, book, Out of Body, that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, which is a decent, it's kind of a murder mystery with, with out of body magic kind of stuff going on. Too. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it's drawn by, um, drawn by in in Inky Miranda or whatever. His name. Uh, so, so the guy who does, uh, they, we live. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess that's part of why we lives on a break. Cause he's doing this. And Peter mm, Milligan right. also has a book about to come out from, uh, um, vault. So okay. I think Vault is a place to look for Vertigo type of books. Not that all of their books are that way, but some of them are. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like there's that one about uh, about the painter who can paint real make reality come true. That's yes. very Vertigo like. I forgot the name of that one. Mm. No, I didn't. Um, I, did, I read the first issue. I didn't. I didn't get into it at all. It's like I, well, I mean, if there's, if there's anybody that embodies kind of that vertigo, Millen, Milligan would be him. You know what I yes. mean? Like, yeah, kind yeah, of embodies of that idea, right? Mm -hmm. And he's been just working for everybody right now. He's been all over the place, right? Well, you have to make a book. Um, I assume yeah. Vertigo, the name, is owned by DC Comics. Still, they could bring it out whenever they want to. Probably mm -hmm. the um, whoever's in charge of DC now, who was brought in by AT and T, likes to wanted to bring everything under one label. So they got rid of the Vertigo label and everything's DC. So it's DC black label is the closest they have to bring. Right. So apparently in 2006, Rick, Rich, Rich, Rick Weech? Rick Weech. Yeah. yeah, he produced this graphic novel uh, about this uh, one guy and there's something happened, crashes in, and there's this like nice little uh, graphic novel. I can't find it anywhere. It's apparently very obscure. It's only him created for Vertigo. And I'm so curious, but you know, like, eBay doesn't only in USA you can find that one because apparently it wasn't as popular. And I was like really curious because sometimes we reach is really good for me in some parts. Oh man, which is amazing. He's he's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Talk yeah. about uh, you know, someone who's uh subverting any sort of hero or whatever genre he's yes, that's the clam. Sorry, Great. can't get can't get oh, that's no. Good. That's the that's the that's the that's the one. That's the title name. Ah. That's the title of King Hell. 
No, no, no. The the Rick Reach, um, the comic book in Vertigo. I'm talking about that. Not one oh, oh he's, he, he did another. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so I haven't heard. A lot of the people who did books at Vertigo now have ownership of their book and can publish it elsewhere. Although I don't oh. think that's true of everyone. It depends on what deal oh. they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna show you. you can get no. I think. Yeah, rare bit fiends. Yeah, I've got some of those issues. And that must have been a reference to um, Nemo and Slumberland, right? Isn't Correct. That, yeah, that's exactly the original right. title yeah. of re, before it was called Nemo and Slumber, Slumberland, wasn't it? Rare right. bit fiends or something. Oh, you can find it now. I I've typed it in a different type. Anyway, so this is the original, um, the way it came out. Oh. And apparently, according to Neil Gaiman, supremely magnificent, strange, and nothing like anything else I've read. Neil Gaiman, <laughs> if you want to believe him. So, apparently, yeah, yeah. yes, you can. I um, uh, apparently now I typed it differently. I can find it. I might just really pick it up now. Ooh, I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Sometimes you type in different things, and then suddenly it appears, like Something you said. Up. Yeah. Yeah, like you said before, you know, like that other with Herman book. I typed the specific ones, and people probably don't type the specific I was talking about anyway. Yeah, yeah. I won. I wonder if the Vertigo books are available on DC's digital service. Um, that would make that would tempt me to subscribe to that. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I can't I don't get know it. If it's there. I can't get it in UK. So. Oh, that sucks. Oh, so get in touch that. with uh, Roger. He can tell you because he has that app. Um, Roger nine nine five six five oh whatever his name. Is. <laughs> oh, he does. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. He, you're right. He's he's occasionally put up videos lately. Yeah. I don't think he's on Twitter, and I don't I don't know how to get in touch with him. Actually, no, he's on Twitter. He, he is, is? He posts oh, okay. sometimes. Yeah, you can find okay. him. Yeah. So, um, speaking of your John Ridgeway, I thought I thought so. I just had to double check. I won a four issue Vertigo mini series from a guy on on one of the local auctions. And it's called uh, the Trench Coat Brigade. Um, I'm Ooh. picking it up uh, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Uh, um, so I don't know if you, you can make that out. So it's just a four issue mini. And then I also won this Fafard and whatever it is. And that's um, Glenn Fabre on Trench Coat Fabre. Brigade. Um, sorry, uh, John Ridgeway. It looks like it's Ridgeway. him on the cover, but it's a Ridgeway interior. Um, and I mm -hmm. think it's, yeah, it's, it's just a four issue mini series, but yeah. Phantom Stranger, etc. So I'm looking forward oh, to that. Cool. I have to see what that's like. And Doctor Third and, this and is... John Constantine, Hellblazer. Yeah. Oh, nice! Mm -hmm. I want to read that. <laughs> yeah, and this is the Bike Club yeah. I was talking about. That's How Chaken. Oh, Apparently. How Chaken. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. That's five issues. Um, How Chaken yeah. and Teachman as well. Teachman? Yeah. Something like that. So. That trench coat brigade, I want to because um, uh, it looks very intriguing because of that. Yeah. There's a uh, Constantine if it's there, so yeah. And it's funny, all those books in 2006 were advertising Constantine in the movie with uh, Keanu Reeves, which I actually right. really liked. And I really liked the soundtrack. I fucking love that soundtrack because that jazz yeah, yeah. is the probably only jazz uh, things I actually appreciate. I'm very bad on right. that side of the. Jazz, I can listen live, is um, but not on the record. I don't know why. I see the instruments working. I see the people, then I get into the rhythm. But then I put the record on. It's like nope, <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> or yeah, radio, yeah, yeah. nope, I can't get into this. Anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure what Trojan Horse Comics means, but I like that as a name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not an actual Trojan Horse Comics, is there? Think so. um, well, I am. I'm kind of running out of time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have gone just three hours, which is pretty he healthy. Yeah, um, I'd say so. Yep. So I want to thank everybody. We've had fantastic comment commenters uh, mm -hmm. throughout. Mm -hmm. Many of our usual gang, who we love, and some uh, slightly different people. Um, so thank you very much to everybody, and uh, we'll be back. I'm not sure on whose channel next week. Ah, uh, Terence, isn't it? We went all circle now. Yep, this okay. guy. Okay, or yep. or we, I might owe an, a second one. I'm not sure. 
Oh, you want second one? Maybe. <laughs> uh, well, I don't I, care. I'd be okay. uh, Honestly, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, They're yeah, okay. Fun. Especially on my channel. It, I, I it's missed a, a couple, so difficult. why don't we'll we'll do another one next week on my channel? Oh yeah, so come back, and, people. Uh, no Earl traveling Gray for you. Be back. Yeah. Sorry. I said no traveling for people anymore, so we can come back to your channel right. and watch us yes. again, chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because last week I, when I was doing it from my mom's house, I didn't have enough a good enough computer to want to be in charge. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so it'll be fun next week. Come back to mm -hmm. my channel, and uh, I will add this. There's a playlist now that has like 46 videos on it. Yeah. Both of all of our Sunday chats plus some older chats with Terrence mm -hmm. and Rasa that I could find. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. He went. <laughs> we've we've been doing it for centuries. Even stuff with me and him from like nine years ago. It's it's pretty great. <laughs> Just scrolling through and seeing the amount of so how you know, do you, the length of time we've known each other. It's insane. Well, how do you get the playlist? How you guys get to reach the playlist? I, I'm putting a link to the playlist in the in the comment, not the comments, oh. yeah, the description oh, okay. below. Okay. You cool. can also find the playlist if you go to my channel. Okay. Um, I think I call it floating comics mm -hmm. chat playlist or something like that. 46. Yeah. And so every week I add the new one to it. So we're up to 46. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And that doesn't even include all the ones you guys did with Dr. Monkeybot before. Yeah. Because those are all gone. Right. I can't access those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so we have, we have a rich guys. history of, of talking our heads off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Which right. we love. Okay. Mm. Bye bye, everyone. Right on, hitter. Yes, Can I, I do it for?